Okay, this is a doozy. Um, we have somebody. <laughs> when I heard some of the stuff that this guy was saying on the internet, I was like, we got to bring him into the studio. And it can't be one of these, you know, Zoom uh, interviews or any of this stuff. We've got to get this guy into the studio officially. So that's what we did. So here from uh, Connecticut, which is where he lives, um, we are going to talk to a guy by the name of David Weiss, also known as nickname Flat Earth Dave. That's right, Flat Earth Dave. And uh, he has a presentation he's going to show us and prove to us that the earth is flat. And boy, do I have a lot of questions. My wife has even more questions than I do, I feel like. Um, so my wife, Sherry, is going to co-host this. My beautiful wife, lovely wife, Sherry, is going to co-host. I got to say those things. So, yeah, don't want to forget to say that stuff. Is going to co-host this episode with me, and she brought with her a globe or Dave <laughs> for a flat earth tape because because we got questions. So... Let's um let's get into this. This is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be a good one. From the farm that Johnny Cash called the center of the universe. This is the Jack Vale Podcast. I like Willie and I like Waylon. You want me to ride? You gotta play some George Jones and Conway Twitty. Just keep it country cause I'm here, Billy. Like a little bit of hip hop and give me some man in black. You can kiss my cash. Yeah. I am really excited to be here today because I get fascinated by really interesting things. And we started watching these videos. This guy, uh, his name is David Weiss, who's with us today. And he's also known as uh, Flat Earth Dave. Thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. I, I guess I picked that name by default and because it <laughs> triggers people a little bit and I want to get their attention. So yeah, you embrace that name. I embrace it's it. Like, a lot of okay. people in the, in the movement, in the, uh -huh. in the true earth movement or the level earth movement, they, uh, they, they, they tend to shy away from it. Um, I, I embrace it and I'm trying to own it because, uh -huh. you know, first the earth is not flat. It's a topographical plane with hills and valleys. It's level. It's horizontal. Water proves that. The whole, and a great way to describe that is flat. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So circular too. It very well could be circular. I believe it is. <laughs> she watched. She's been watching some videos too. Uh, I'm here with my lovely co-host Sherry Vale. My wife is with me today because she was fascinated by all of the stuff that we've been learning too. And why are you sitting in my chair? <laughs> because uh, this is only the second time so far that anybody has ever sat in that chair. Go ahead and say it. You can say it. Why are you sitting in my chair and not in this on this couch? Because your wife is so good looking. No, that's not I just why. need that to help me look better. <laughs> that's not why. <laughs> because I, you we're don't gonna, like my couch. We're, no, your couch is fine. It's just because we're gonna be we were talking about I, showing some images. I and... know <laughs> there was that, but then it, when you first sat down, you were like, oh, I saw the way you were moving around, trying to get comfortable. And I stuff think like that. I think you're making up stories. Oh my gosh, <laughs> typical you, globalist. John Schneider was here, like would not have anything to do with this couch, and to the point where I let him have that chair. He was the first person, uh, and. Uh, and the first thing he said when we started filming was, your couch sucks. <laughs> and then he wouldn't shut up about it. Remember, he kept going on and on about, about the couch. But eventually, I don't know. That's really going to be sad news. I like the way that it looks aesthetically. I think I it's think a cool couch. I think the couch is fine. I'm as just worried about... You have, I think, another little pillow or something yeah, would be some, better. Some more support. I mean, We've been talking about that for a long time. I think it's fine. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to I, the I, podcast, I, I know. everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for doing this. I'm really fascinated by... Uh, by all of this stuff, I do have one question for you. I noticed that because I was doing research and like looking for every podcast that I could find you in, I don't think, yeah, there's a lot, but I don't think I've ever found you in one in this kind of a setting. I mean, I know we're at a unique spot, but in, in studio, in person, I don't 
think I've seen that. Every all the ones that I've seen have, have been like Zooms or Skypes or something like that. Since 2014, when I discovered Flat Earth, I haven't done an in-studio podcast. I used to do in-studio podcasts when I was doing a Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole podcast in New York City, but. Um, with Zoom, uh, it's so much easier to present and show graphics. Um, you know, we can have a great conversation. I can convey, I can show people that we don't live on a globe just by having a conversation. But the graphics, the videos, you know, um, the imagery really helps. So, you know, in studio, this is fantastic. We've got my uh, iPad here where we're going to pull up some images and, and show you stuff when need be. And I think we're going to have a good time. Okay, that's cool. Are you, uh, you say it in a very confident manner. Like I noticed that when you were just telling me that you you made the statement, I think something like, um, "I can show that the Earth is not a globe." Like you say it as it's a matter of fact. It is a matter of fact, and when and <laughs> flat Earthers, you know, there's flat Earthers. Some people believe that we live in this dome, aired, and there's nothing else. Okay. Myself, I believe that there's more beyond um, the shoreline that we call Antarctica. Okay. I believe that there's bird. more beyond there. And we can have these conversations all day, but until we get access to explore these areas, I don't know if we'll, if we'll ever know. But I can completely prove to you that we don't live on a spinning ball, and every flat earther has come to that final conclusion. So I can prove to you that it's not a globe. And then you say, well, where's your model? We actually have a model, and we'll go over that today. But I don't have to replace it. Like, let's say... Sherry um, is being accused of stealing the last cookie from the cookie jar, mm. right? And we know that Sherry every day comes home and has one cookie every single day. And she left this morning, there was one cookie left, and then um, she the last cookie was gone, right? So she's been accused of stealing the cookie from the cookie jar. But somehow I have absolute proof that she was actually at the mall uh, on never and, and didn't come home that day. Mm -hmm. And the cookie's gone. So we've 100% proved that she didn't steal a cookie. Then you can't go to me and go, well, then who did? She's guilty until so, she did. Okay, so you're ba it sounds like you're saying that you have 100% proof that the, that the yeah, earth is not absolutely. a globe or spinning or... 100%. Okay, so it turns out, um, I did some research too, um, about your past. No, I'm just playing. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. No, I, I did some research too and found out there are way more people out there than I ever thought that there was who believe... What you just said. Um, and I started to say, hey, I got this guy coming. I started telling random people. And they shocked me by like, oh, yeah, I already know this stuff. And and then and then she st has been learning a lot of stuff because there's just a lot of available information that's out there now about it. Um, is that how what's the percentage, do you think, of people out there who believe that the earth is flat versus that it's a globe. So like three or four years ago, they did a, a survey in Brazil um, asking people, do you think the earth is flat globe or something else? And 11 million people said they don't believe it's a globe. 11 million in wow. Brazil four years ago. And it's been growing exponentially since wow. then. This is my, my app the, with the friend finder. These are just the people here in the United States. Wow. That's that have my app, which I think represent less than 1% of the total flat earther population. And there's just dots on top of dots on top of dots. And it's wow. not just the United States. Uh -huh. We can go over to the UK. Oh, wow. Totally covered. Yeah. Oh. Um, hmm. And there's, we even have, you know, people in Australia and um, even one guy at KC Station in Antarctica. I was to say, is there anybody in Antarctica? There's two people in Antarctica. <laughs> if you were to just guess how many, what would you think the percentage would be in the U.S.? Uh, that's a great question. We were having that conversation earlier in the car. Yeah. Um, I'm being recognized when I'm going all over the place. The last time, mm -hmm. not today, when I was on an airplane, the person that sat next to us is like, oh, my God, it's Flat Earth Dave. The stewardess is like, I know who you are. I have a, And she showed me she has a private Facebook group with a whole bunch of stewardesses in it that are all Flat Earthers. And oh, she's wow. showing me the feed. I'm like, yeah, that's my meme. That's my video. And she's <laughs> um, so... I don't know what the percentage is. Is it more than 10%? Is it 5%? Is it 1%? I mean, 1% is a lot of people. Yeah, right. I think I, you know what I think? I think it's 10%. It could be. Uh, well, I think it's 10%, but I think there might be a lot of people who think it and they're afraid to say anything about it or something. Right. Because even I did like a little um, uh, Twitter X poll and I said, uh, the earth is flat. And then the other option was the earth is a globe. And it was exactly, I think, 90, 10. I think that's what it was. 90, 90 globe. Right. Uh, but... I've always, um, it's always been a globe to me. I've always, I grew we, we up. All, we were all globers. We were all, we were all globers. Yeah, because you, you know that 
my whole life. I've never, nobody's ever come to me till I stumbled on these videos. Nobody's ever really said anything otherwise. I've always kind of, we've, We've been programmed to believe it's a globe before we can talk. Our, our parents put a mobile above us with planets, and we had spaceships on our sheets, and we watched Sesame Street, and they have astronauts on there. Mm -hmm. And it's and they go to school. Um, they have a globe in the front of the classroom, or at least they used to. And then they, uh, the, one of the first worksheets you bring home is the the orbits of the sun and the moon and the earth and the planets. Right. And uh, and I, I actually remember that she and these the kids still get that. So they're indoctrinating. And we're going to get into, by the end, why the lie? Because this is where you, anyone that's listening to this that hasn't looked into flat earth, you're going to be like, oh, there's a million proofs of the flat earth, you know, boats over the horizon, sunset seasons, and all of this stuff. And then when we knock each one of them down, showing you what's really going on and how these things actually prove the earth is flat, you throw your hands up and go, well, why would they lie? What difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. That's what mm. everybody says because mm -hmm. we've been programmed to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess that's true. I, I always think like like um, some of the stuff that I know, how much of it do I know because I looked into it versus so, just was told it. Well, b b belief is the enemy of knowing, as Crow 777 Radio says. Um, b b belief is easy. Where do I live? Do you know what state I live in? Connecticut. Connecticut. Do you know it or do you believe it? Uh, we believe I, it because I, you told us. Yeah, you told me that you. So live you in believe it. Why would I, I lie? Believe. Why would I lie? Yeah. Why would you and lie? And you booked yeah. me out of New York, so I live this near Connecticut. And and so, <laughs> yeah, but so belief I'm is assuming. easy because you can somebody can tell you something, you can believe it. Now it's time to take a nap, drink a beer, yeah. watch some football, do whatever you want. You have no extra work to believe. Mm -hmm. But to know, you'd have to go. You know what? Let me just make sure he lives in Connecticut. And you'd have to look me up. Maybe you find me on Facebook. Maybe you find my friends, and you look up other stuff. You find my high school. Well, now you pretty much know, but maybe all that's fake too. And then you go on eBay. You find my high school yearbook. You buy one, and there I am. Um, with Steve Young in the yearbook. Right? Yeah, and yeah, there, yeah. there you go. And you found it. Now you know. But knowing takes time and effort. And we've been brought up in this society where no one has any time. And, you know, if you want to become rich, uh -huh. make something that makes people lazier. Right. For example, uh, do you cook dinner? Yes. Okay. You have to shop. You have to cook. Yep. You have to prepare. You have to yeah. clean. Yep. Yeah. All that. She, What's easier than cooking? DoorDash. Um, well, that, that, <laughs> then you jumped one, one ahead. Fast food. Right. Right. Because yeah. you just go pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. now, yeah. how do you make people lazier? Oh, yeah. DoorDash. Yeah, you don't even have to get off yeah. your crappy couch. Exactly. Right. right. See what I did there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Eventually, I'll replace this couch, I'm sure. <laughs> don't replace it. I love it. Okay. I like the, yeah, yeah I like the way it looks. It's all about the looks. Um, all right. So what is it? What is it like? Let me turn my, make sure that I turn my phone off here because because you didn't. Um, I forgot to do that. Um, what is it like in public when you like when you go out? Is it hard for you to bring up this topic or you do it with all kinds of confidence? So now I do it with all kinds of confidence. You saw you picked me up at the airport today. What was I wearing? I had a black hoodie on with giant letters that said flat earther. <laughs> you can't get any more um, obvious than that. Now, I, I, um, I make a lot of T-shirts that people get um, that are more subtle. Some of okay. them just said level earth. You know, or, oh, yeah. you know, stuff that, because a t-shirt is a, or a sweatshirt is a great way to spark a conversation. People, what, what do you mean by that? You know, and then the conversation started. Everyone that's a flat earther loves to, um, talk to other people about it because it is life changing. Once you understand what it is, I want to, I want to find out why I definitely want to get into like why you believe it, how you learned it yeah. uh, and proof and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. But it, it is kind of weird that it seems like people are kind of coming out of the woodwork with this. Like, and yesterday I met somebody um, here actually, who's here at the farm and he came in and we started talking and he goes, man, he was checking out the set and everything. And he's like, these are great cameras. He knew all about the equipment. And um, I told him I had a big, I had a podcast tomorrow. I was excited about, really fascinated with the information. And he goes, who is it? And I said, I said who it was. And he gave me this look and he got really excited. Um, he goes, oh, the earth, yeah, it's flat. The earth is flat. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I just like that. Like, it was so quick. And I go, let's go outside and talk about this. So we went outside away from, there was like a tour going on, Johnny Cash thing. And um, we went outside and started to talk about it. And he said he had a shirt. He goes, man, if I could come tomorrow, I'd love to come. I have a, a hoodie that just says the word hoax on it, but the O is a is a globe. <laughs> so it's like that's one of those subtle ways of kind of like 
saying, you know, what he believes. One of my shirts is the H is the space station. It looks like an H. The O yeah. is a, is a globe. The A is the moon lander, the Lem. And the, the X is SpaceX, the SpaceX X. <laughs> and it oh, just yeah. says hoax. Yeah. That's cool. And that's another great that's conversation funny. starter. But before I, I was saying, um, one thing we all have in common, Flat Earthers, is... Uh -huh. um, where did the thought go? It was really good. It was, oh, we know we... um Oh, I lost the thought. Oh, it's no. Gone. Hey, I it's gone. Right. I got right. zapped. It must be the Wi-Fi in here. It's, yeah, <laughs> aliens or something. Uh, I'm trying to remember the point. It'll oh, come back. Man. Hey, Chris, if anybody walks through the door, do me a favor and just like make it like a shh motion, motion so that we don't lose our... Okay. Um, okay, so you said you've known this or, or you've you've known this, known this, right? You know this. Since the 2014? About 2014, so, somewhere around there. I'm not great with dates, but that, it's 2014, 15. Right when did in there. you become kind of like an advocate, like really pursuing this? So I was doing a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, looking into many deceptions of this world. And, okay. and I was being blown away about how much of a deception this world is. And, and uh, you know, someone says, hey, this thing was a hoax or this wasn't real. I'd look into it. I said, let me look. Let me find out what's going on here. Let me look at the actual details and mm -hmm. not just listen to what the mainstream news says, who mm -hmm. just lies constantly. And... um. Then people started sending me flat earth stuff. Hey, Dave, have you looked into flat earth? The first email, like, I was like, that's stupid. And I just immediately, I, think, I thought yeah. the guy was just being funny. And at that time, why did you think it was stupid? Because everyone thinks, of the, come on, we all know we live on a globe. It's one yeah. of the first things we learn. <laughs> Interesting. It's one of the first things we learn. And, uh, and um, I remember my point. Nobody, everyone looks back and goes, how the heck did we ever believe in the globe? Once you understand what it is, if Globers knew one-tenth of what flat earthers know about their globe model, they would be flat earthers. Because people that believe in the globe don't even know what the globe model is. And when you look at it, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. The earth is flat. So, But they assume that it doesn't make sense because they don't have the intelligence yeah. to understand like the scientists do. That's uh, right? the the fallacy of uh, appealing to authority. You, you think that someone that has a degree is more qualified to tell you what common sense tells you, right? If someone has a degree, you know why they have a degree? Because they're fantastic at reading and memorizing and regurgitating yep. what they're told. They become good little memorizers and order followers. Right. Do so, they, do, but do they also, like if they're going to go to college or whatever and get a degree, do they are they also doing research to search for themselves? Or no, not? because right. if you question what's in the textbook you can fail you have to you have to memorize and regurgitate what they tell you so you know people say what about peer review we've talked to some scientists and they're like oh they don't do peer review if there's something that goes against the mainstream they don't look at it because it could discredit all of the work that's been done they, yeah, they will not look at it what's that same well, thing with medicine yeah in, in all allopathic medicine that's a whole nother podcast yep. <laughs> um it, it, it's absolute insanity what what people will believe so Back to your question, where were we going? We were going, um, why? Oh, so deep inside the rabbit hole, and I was getting uh, emails more and more coming in. Hey, Dave, just watch this video. Delete, delete, delete. I don't have time for your nonsense. Then I said, so you know what? Ban for life. I came up with the term ban for life because <laughs> if you're going to ask me to watch a flat earth video, you can no longer comment on our videos. <laughs> you, I, I don't even want you listening to our podcast anymore. You yeah. need to go get a mental check because earth is not flat. And that's that was my attitude. And then... One day, well, a researcher I trust very much, uh, Sophia Smallstorm, she did some great documentaries. I was talking to her about some crazy hoax that was going on, and I just said to her, I said, at the end of our like two-hour conversation, I said, the world is filled with so much deception. It's mind-blowing. I was like having this overwhelming feeling. And she goes, oh, David, it's worse than that. I think the earth might be flat. And I couldn't pull I'm like, are you kidding <laughs> Here we me? go. And by, by the way, she's a long talker. While she was talking, I'm literally on Facebook deleting, banning people for asking about flat earth while she's telling me. And then she tells me that. And she goes, here, watch these videos. Now, I didn't learn. I didn't, you, I, I don't watch a video and say the earth is flat, you have to verify all things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a video mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. done can show you some things that maybe you never knew was there, that can show you some doors that have been hidden from you. Mm. And so she sent me Mark Sargent's clues. He did a series of clues because um, Mark Sargent, when he first heard about flat earth, he's like, no, no, it can't be. Mm. So he made a series of like five, 10 minute videos, um, you know, a whole bunch of short videos, five or 10 minutes that um, were asking questions. He figured some PhD, some scientists would come back and go, oh, this is why, right? And mm -hmm. nobody came back. And he made more and more. I think he made the 13 or 17 of them. And no one came back with an answer on any of them. 
And that's where it really started. So one of the things that got me was um, boats going over the horizon because that's the first thing everyone jumps to. I see boats, they disappear from the bottom up. And I went back and examined the the, sh the video that they showed us in school of the three-masted ship disappearing over the horizon. And what I noticed is every time they cut the film, the camera was lowered. The camera was lowered. And the lower you lower the camera, and then the boat disappears. And also I noticed that the water had... It was a stormy day. There was like five to 10 foot swells out there. Okay. So a, a two foot wave can block an entire city skyline in the distance. If the two foot wave is halfway to the city that is tiny in the distance, that wave will block your apparent horizon. and It'll create an apparent horizon and the whole city will, will disappear below it huh. uh, because it's getting smaller as it goes away. So... I live on the water my whole life, same town. And I went out and I spent a thousand bucks. I got a super zoom camera, a P900 at the time. It had just come out and got a tripod, went down. I was a, and I, I lucked out because many days you can't see things because of atmospheric condition, because of water, because of humidity. But I went down, it was a cool, crisp and super unusually clear and calm day. And I sat down at the water's edge. I had the camera maybe two feet off the water and I zoomed in on a buoy that's over 10 miles away, just under 11 miles away. So I rounded down to 10, give the globe the benefit of the doubt. I went on the globe earth curve calculator and there should be 66 feet of curvature. Now 66 feet of curvature, what does that mean? That means it's behind a physical curve. A ball has a physical curve. Right. And, and I said, well, that must be wrong. The curvature calculator must be wrong. So I went to the debunking sites, trying to prove the globe. I want to prove the globe. I'm like, the earth can't be flat. And um, there's this one crazy one that says, well, it doesn't work that way. You got the ball. And so you're here and your object's here. So it's only half of that height. You're not at the top and then they're down here. You're here. And the, it goes like that, which is stupid and but i said okay 33 feet of curvature why is that stupid because that's not how we would see you wouldn't you wouldn't see up and down right. you're at the top and then the earth is just dropping away if you were laying on the ground with your eyeball literally a quarter of an inch off the ground you couldn't see far at all oh i see uh. one foot off the ground according to globe <clears throat> math the horizon should only be 1.2 miles away Standing up a six foot tall person on a perfectly clear day, perfectly calm water, the horizon should be six, no, three miles away. Because at three miles, according to globe math, not flat earth math, there should be six feet of drop. So six feet of drop means there's your curve. You no longer can see the surface of the water. I can still see that buoy. 33 feet of curvature, 66 feet of curvature should be blocking it. I can still see it. I can zoom across on a nice clear day. And I can see people playing on the beach seven, eight miles away. So then what's what's happening in those experiments where they, they look out and see the boat and they see it going down? So very good. Um, there, it, it all is all due to perspective, right? The, the things, everything, the sky ramps down and the ground ramps up and everything goes to your eye level. Things from the side, they all go to the vanishing point like we were taught in arts, our art class. Uh -huh. And so imagine yourself standing next to a... Um, you're on a flat, you know, you're on a, on a farm and a quarter of a mile away, there's a 5,000 foot mountain. Just, wow. Look at the top of that mountain. It's 5,000 feet over my eye line. Right. Mm -hmm. So now the sun is directly above you. It's noon and the sun is going away and it goes beyond the top of that mountain. Just like if you're standing in New York City next to a tall building and the sun's above you and a little while later, the sun moves beyond the building. You can't see the sun anymore. You know, mm -hmm. it's not below the horizon. Mm -hmm. It just went beyond the building. Right. The sun right. went right. beyond the mountain. Right. Now, how could I see the sun again? I could float up in the sky and see it, or I can yeah, go backwards go through all the farmland, and that mountain will get smaller, we'll get smaller and smaller and, and smaller, then able, and right, then, I'll be able to, then I'll be able to see the oh. see the sun again. Oh, I see. Right? Okay. Yeah. If I, yeah, yeah. If I literally yeah. snap my fingers, and I'm 10 miles away from that mountain, the top of that mountain that's up there is now going to be at my eye level. It's going to appear to be my horizon right yeah okay all right so yeah. the sun will go away and it's not going down because we're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound which you'll have to believe if you live on a ball like when you watch <laughs> the sunset is the sun moving away just as you see or are you on a ball falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound making the sun appear to go down hmm. so 
that's so so, so oh, stick with me you got these mountains in the distance mm-hmm. it's creating a horizon line that's at your eye level but it's really thousands of feet above your eye level above the mountain you have the atmospheric deck let's pretend there's a whole bunch of cumulus clouds all of those clouds the ones above you are ten thousand feet in the air but they'll also merge into that same line in the distance and the sun is above the clouds So now the sun is just going beyond the clouds, beyond the mountain, and you see it disappear from the bottom up. Same thing with boats. On the the water, you have waves and you have the thickest atmospheric density. The boats are just disappearing. Um, On my app, there's a boats over the horizon section. Uh, you'll see all the videos that, that we've all recorded them for you. So you, you can go out and do them yourself, but we've already recorded them for you. You'll see how things disappear. And sometimes when the conditions are right, you can watch a boat disappear from the bottom up. It's gone and you could say it's over the earth curve, but then you can zoom in and bring the whole boat back again. And that has to do with the angular resolution limits of our eyes. We can only see something a certain thing. If I had a lock of your hair, give me a lock of her hair. Oh, never mind. Don't <laughs> so if I held a lock of her hair right here, could you see it? Probably. Yes. But if I moved it 50 yards away, could you see it? No. Nah. No, it's angular size is too small. Mm-hmm. And so, so these boats become too small for you to see, but then you can zoom them back in again. Mm. Right? Because right. that's a terrestrial object <laughs> from a terrestrial point of view. Okay. Just last thing, the sun is a celestial object. So it's going beyond its horizon, beyond the clouds, beyond the mountains, beyond the atmospheric deck of opacity, I call it. You can't zoom it back in because it's above another layer. Where does the sun go? Really you have to to remember. Yeah, where does the sun go? Yeah, yeah where does the, where does the <laughs> where sun does go? it go? It goes beyond the mountains, beyond the atmospheric deck. Yeah, she's going to be better for a lot of these questions. I'm not yeah. very smart. <laughs> I, I don't, you're going to ask me questions. Where does the sun go? I'm going to go, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. It goes away. It gets dark <laughs> at night, and that's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, goes, it goes away like a local light. Imagine yourself in a big, giant gymnasium or a big dark room, giant room. All yeah. the lights are out. And you have um, a light, of uh, just a, a fifth, fifth, oh, no, it's a, just a light bulb, whatever. And you hold it um, a couple feet over the floor on yeah. one side of the gym. It's going to light up just an area. Just a little area. Right. And it, the whole other side of the room is going to be dark. It's going to be dark. Right. Now, that's without any atmosphere blocking it. Right? But from the other side of the room, you'll be able to still probably see you, that little. You will. But the, the thing is, when, when things go beyond, a celestial object moves beyond, uh, you, you will see it. It'll look like it disappears um, because it's going beyond that, that, that horizon. So I'm going to just show you right here. This is. Um, here I am. This is my flat this is earth my kitchen. Flat earth counter. And What's a I, flat earth kitchen? This is my flat earth kitchen. <laughs> so, so I got this line here, and that's the path of the sun. I have my with me? camera. Yeah. Okay. And filming. And I'm filming along the, the path of the sun. So now I'm just going to jump forward a little bit. And I prove that the line is level. And I'm just going to jump forward a little bit here. Um, and I'm going to run this, uh, this light forward. I want to edit a little bit of this out, but give me a second here. So now I'm running this this light across the line. Okay. I'm going to run the light across the line. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Um, so here I am running the light and from a celestial scale. point of view, like, and it doesn't go below like, this. This could be the atmospheric the deck or a city skyline or mountains. I'm just showing you. Now I got another camera on the, the other end, side the from where it started on the counter, stopped. on the flat earth counter. Right. And when we watch that, uh-huh. you're gonna see you're gonna see how we see things in the sky. It's gonna show you. Okay. So here, here I'm just showing it again here. Let me just jump forward. Okay. All right. So here, we so go. here it is from the other side. And as I I'm as I move along. away, you're going to see the line. I'm going to say, is path, this line level, level to the flat Earth? It's a level line, but doesn't look like it's going. Um, it looks like it's going like it, this. It looks like it's going down. Right. right. Yeah. And it's it, moving. We remember, it didn't now, go below that level. object. It, mm. much it didn't go below it. It just go. went beyond it. So watch, it's going to go yeah. beyond it from our it's point of view. Still on the and, same it, and level it's setting line. from the bottom up there. Okay. And that's how we, that, that thing is way Let's above the camera, look. but it lo- at a distance, it looks like it's at eye level. Okay. It looks like it's at eye level. So let me just see if I can fast forward this to. Um, 
to where we compare it to the actual sun. All right, here we go. So here's a, here's a zoom in of it. And you'll see, since it starts, it looks like it's setting from the bottom up. Oh, yeah. And you perceive that as your eye level, even though it's thousands of feet. Now, this is a real sunset here. Oh, that's kind of weird. On the right. So this is my sunset. This is a real sunset. What's it going behind? It's, that's going, the, it's just going further away. It's, going, it's not actually going down. It's going beyond. Oh, that's pretty weird. Yeah. yeah. That's actually kind of cool, man. <laughs> it's going Could you guys beyond. See that? That's actually kind of cool. So, yeah, lady. it's pretty cool. So that's going to be implemented into the final, um, you know, edit so you can see that diagram. That is... Not gonna lie, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. So it's did you see it? Completely Jake? straight yeah. line, but yeah. the light just kept going further and further away, and it actually gave the illusion that the, the, it was going down the way that the sun sets. So things, if I didn't know what he was doing, I would have just looked at that with my naked eyes, and I would have been like, "It's going down. It's a light that's going down." It's going, but away. it wasn't. I knew that it wasn't. So go on a go on a you're on a straight road that has street lights, high street lights. Mm -hmm. A straight road and all the street lights are the same height. Stand under one. That is your noontime sun. Uh -huh. And then look at the one a block down the road. It's almost at your eye level. Mm. Yeah. And then imagine that road imagine that road is five miles long. Can you see the lights that are a mile or two miles away? No, you can't. Everything just merges into the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. And that's without yeah. um that's without the atmosphere. That's out with, without the atmosphere becoming that, I call it the atmospheric deck of opacity. Hmm. So I'm going to show you one more thing. Now, this is, this, now that you learn that, this is going to kind of scare you away from all of that. Um, this is a, uh, a shot that I got seven different times. And this is the sun uh, that I'm filming this from altitude. I have a drone up super high. It's super cold okay. and the sun was going down, down, down. And then it just stopped and it just sat there on the horizon. It just sat there. Now I'm zooming in on it. I'm zooming okay. in on okay. it. Yeah, 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 it yeah. sat there for about 10 minutes. Now my friends were over here at the beach. They said they saw the sunset from the bottom up 10 minutes ago. Oh, right. Wow. But as I'm sitting here, it's just sitting. Yeah. It's just sitting there and then watch what happens. The atmosphere becomes thick over distance. Mm -hmm. When you're looking across the atmosphere, you're looking through all the atmosphere. And so when the sun is over there, you're looking through all the atmosphere. And as it moves away, its light can no longer push. It can no longer push all the way through. So it disappears and it takes its light with you. And it just goes and watch what happens. Disappears. And it's gone. And now it's still, the light is still there. You just can't see the sun anymore. Mm -hmm. We're brainwashed into believing that light travels for billions and billions of miles, and those stars that you're looking at burned out a billion years ago, but the light's still coming to us, right? That that's pretty weird. Yeah, and there's uh, I filmed that seven times, and boy, when I filmed that, they the the trolls were not happy. They're like, that's CGI, <laughs> that's this and that. But on my app, on the more resources page, there's a whole section where that is, and I live streamed it. I uh -huh. did all sorts of stuff. Um, so there's no question that that's actually happening. Well, I have a question for you. Why do you think people get so irate about it? Like, why why is the response <laughs> so this big over something like this? Because speaking like from my perspective. I, I really don't care that much. I mean, I care about how I feel about certain things and all of that. But what I mean is when somebody's opinion is different, I think that's, I think that's fine. I, I, I'm not really, but what makes me mad is like when I'm trying to watch a video, I'm trying to look something up. You get warned immediately by everybody. Like yeah. be real careful with what you're about to watch because science has proven this false. And they never the tell reason, you how science proved the false. Yeah, but the no, reason that bugs me, though, is because every time I try to look for something, I don't care. Like, if I see something, if I believe something, and science, the, the doctors, whatever, everybody says, this is not, at what you, what you believe is not accurate, and here's why, even if they can prove it. I don't, okay, fine, thank you. Now let me move on from that. I want to believe in aliens or bigfoot or whatever it is and we're a free society we should be able to have these conversations and not be warned about everything that's what i don't like i don't like the gut i don't well, like the, not the big authority 
you're not warmed about Bigfoot or the Loch Ness monster or like, that's aliens. That's what I'm saying, right? Um, but right. just flat Earth, they did a uh, yeah. Well, uh, and they, vaccines why, why is too. That? They warn you about vaccines yeah. too. They did. Uh, they did a. Um, There's a congressional hearing a couple of years ago about disinformation on YouTube and what are they going to do about it. And the example that they used was flat Earth. They're like, well, if somebody searched, you know, flat Earth, we're going to show them the Earth is not flat and give them more authoritative, you know, Google selected information. And anytime you find a flat Earth video. That warning is right there. It, mm -hmm. It's it's unreal. So basically, you know, the way I look at the world, if they tell you not to look somewhere, I look there. You know, yeah. when there's an eclipse happening, I look at the eclipse. I don't wear those glasses. And oh, yeah. It, I looked at the last one. Fantastic. And I'm like, oh, my eyes didn't burn up. And yeah. there it is. There would be a million people <laughs> well, blinded during every eclipse. You looked I at did. The sun? I looked at it. And, then oh, the and I yeah. took a picture of it. And there's a little sliver of the moon that yeah. you could see, too, in well, my Well, that's photo. another question. Is it really the moon? <laughs> so you're saying they don't, they, they don't want you to look at it because you're going to find out the truth. You're going to learn something. You're going to learn that you're not on a globe and it's i actually think snow. that there's all sorts of information coming down it, it's wild oh, i wow. stared at an eclipse my eyesight uh -huh. got better uh -huh. now don't listen people yeah. <laughs> you can hurt your eyes by looking at the sun unless you're a uh, practice sun gazing right. you know don't look at it if your eyes hurt it's telling you something look away yeah but yeah, if they chris, don't hurt uh, feel free chris over there um sent me a video a long time ago about remember chris that thing you said about looking at the sun Yeah, uh, yeah. So I've seen that before. I, well, hey, I'm a key in point. I, yes. I, I watched the eclipse for an hour and a half. And you know what's funny? Uh, my wife and I are sitting there. We're staring at the eclipse. And there's this other woman. She's on the beach. And she's got her mirrored sunglasses on the ground. And she's got her iPhone. And she's going like this. And, I, <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she goes, well, I'm trying to film the eclipse without looking at it. And I'm afraid to look <laughs> at my iPhone screen. Oh, no. Because the picture of the iPhone screen, she was afraid it was going to And I look at her. Oh, and wow. I go, I go. Do you see the two of us just sitting here staring at the Looking eclipse at for the last hour and a half? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and she's like, she just short circuited. It was like, it was. That's funny. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it is funny. Um, eclipse is a whole nother thing, and eclipses uh -huh. actually prove that the Earth is flat. But that that's the whole thing. You were asking me another question, and I lost it. Oh yes. It. I, I was just bringing up the why, thing about the sun. Why do you think that people get so mad? Uh, yeah, why what is it about that? Like, who cares? And 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 here's another reason why I say that specifically is is like in, in doing very, very basic, simple research, you find that um, it's only been for like the past several decades or so that everyone's collectively <laughs> felt a certain way, most people, about this issue. Whereas before, it was Chris is over here disagreeing, making hands like, it is true. <laughs> it's not true. Uh, I'm, what not, do you I'm think? not saying that it didn't, agree, it didn't of, exist. Most of ancient Greece, 500 years You believe that, Dave? Okay, you just said you. Chris just said five hundred years before Jesus, some of the ancient Greeks believed that the Earth was a globe. Was a globe? That's what you're telling me. You want to hear him comment on that? Okay. And how do you know? How do you get this information? How did you know that? How did you research that? What books? Which, what are they? What books, Who Chris? are the authors? When were they, po <laughs> okay, like, what book? You made the same argument off the Bible. I believe in the Bible. Uh -huh. okay, it was written down in the Bible. Everybody said, well, it could be on the Aristotle. Aristotle. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so Eratosthenes. Okay. So let, let's talk about Eratosthenes. So uh, 2000 years ago, there was a mathematician named Eratosthenes that uh, looked down a well one day and he saw the reflection of the sun and he deduced that the sun was directly above him. Great deduction. I'll, I'll agree. And then he said, you know what? I bet we can figure out how big the globe is if I send my buddy 500, five, 500 miles away, 500 miles away, uh, uh, not 5,000, 500 miles away, and we could see how much the earth is tilted and I can do some really good math. So he mm. sent his buddy 500 miles away and his buddy um, counted his paces. That's how he knew he went 500 miles back then. He, okay. he actually counted really? wow. for 500 miles. That's, that's amazing. That's, imagine that's imagine amazing. halfway there and going, oh, what number was I on? So he gets there and um, I don't think they had cell phones and I think they had a long line and a cup where they would talk to me. Hey, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> okay. And right. uh, luckily the weather cooperated. So the sun was out for both of them. And he mm. put a stick up and he measured that. Then Aristosthenes put a stick up and Aristosthenes had no shadow. Yeah. And he had a shadow and he did some really good calculus and uh, 
figured out the diameter of the radius of the earth. Mm. Absolutely. Because, you know, he figured out the, the, the math is actually, actually good math. So here is uh here's his experiment. Eratosthenes here. He's got no shadow The the sun rays also come in um, because the sun is what they call infinitely far. Uh, the, all the rays come in straight. That's what we're taught. All the rays come in straight, although no one's ever seen straight rays. Um, but here he is. He's got no shadow. Here's his buddy. He measures the shadow and figures out the radius of the earth. Awesome. Okay. okay. So the other problem is Eratosthenes at that time, they were geocentric. They mean they believed that the sun rotated around the earth. So how could you have an infinitely far sun rotating around a tiny speck earth? That makes no sense. And the other thing is nobody has ever seen um, rays come in straight. They always come in crepuscular. Oh, no, you're right. That's yeah. what everyone has. Yeah. No one has yeah. ever seen sun rays right. come in. Why are you saying that is? Well, because this is what it would look like if the sun rays were coming in straight. Yeah, we've never seen no that No one's before. ever seen that. Everyone no, uh, always sees crepuscular. Uh, uh, so right. Eratosthenes ignored all that. He's like, well, oh. whether it's refraction or not through the atmosphere, well, then how are you measuring the angle if it's refracting? Uh -huh. So, but on a flat earth, we have a small local sun. So on a flat earth, here we have a small sun and here we have no shadow. Over here, we have a shadow. We can do some perfectly good calculus and tell you the sphericity of this flat plane. Mm. Go uh, on your desk, uh -huh. put um, put a, a bottle, two, two, two posts, whatever, or two bottles or can, whatever, um, lighters, pencil, okay. and put a light over one of them. It doesn't have a shadow. The other one will have a shadow. Use the same math and figure out the sphericity of your desk. Okay? Math is not reality. You can use it to describe whatever thing you are whatever thing you've already pre-assumed. Uh -huh. He's pre-assuming the globe. Okay. So the other problem is Eratosthenes, mathematician, figured out the radius of the earth. He's Michael Jordan. He's amazing. Well, there's other mathematicians that came out of that same area all through time, and no one ever mentioned his experiment until the mid-1900s. Huh. In the oh, middle wow. of when the Rockefellers took over the education system and they came up with the story of Eratosthenes. Whether he did it or not doesn't matter because it proves nothing, but it's a made up story. Really? Yeah. There's books okay. talking about Eratosthenes, but nothing that mentions his uh, experiment until the mid 1900s. So I have a question for you. Do you, do you acknowledge that? Chris, back over there, just he just made a comment a little while ago. And by the way, the point that I was making, Chris, wasn't that I, I wasn't going to say that it, it never existed or the idea never existed. I was just saying that that 100 years ago, for example, it wasn't split like it is today. Like 90 percent of everybody didn't think that a certain way and 10 percent thought it was very different. It was very more. It was more even, wasn't it? Until until NASA and all of that stuff. Right. No. But they, that, huh? that, that's actually no. that's all that's all. Social conditioning. So back in 2020. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. So 100 years ago, it was more. It 100 was years just... ago, everyone knew the earth was flat. Everybody. What? So, so hang on. So in 2020, I was um, in a, an old age home and I asked the, the nurse, I said, who is the oldest person here that has their wits about them? And she goes, oh, Ruth, right over there. She's in the lunchroom. 102 years old. 102 years 102. old. 102. And I was uh, researching the World's Fair as rabbit hole so deep you can dive in head first because you're never going to hit the bottom. What year, what, <laughs> what year was this? This was 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay. 2020 wow. okay. Pre pandemic. Is, is okay. Ruth still around? Do you know? What? Oh, is she, Ruth... uh, you know what? I, I haven't talked to her in about a year. I, I've been meaning to call her again. So she, okay. I'm hoping she is. So, so. I went over and talked to her about the world's fairs. Never, never yeah. mentioned anything flat earth. I was just like being delicate and asked because she been, had been to the world's fairs and talked about the lights and the everything. And uh, the first time she saw anything lit up, it was amazing. And I said, and her memory was so good. I go, where did you go to elementary school? And she, teacher, the road, the school, Hamden, Connecticut, told me everything. I'm like, I, like, I could barely remember where, you know, the, the road that my school was on. And I said, wow. um, what did they teach you in science class about, the earth. And she says, they taught me the earth was flat. And I said, can I video record us? Yeah. And I broke out the camera <laughs> and I interviewed her and I told her that, that we are, we are, um, the earth is flat and why they're lying. And we're going to get into that. And she literally broke down in tears. It was amazing. The, 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 they went, she, she was like so happy to find out that we're at the center of creation and not a random speck flying through an, a scientifically impossible universe. Uh -huh. And, uh, it literally brought her closer to God. 
it brought her, you know, she's a, she was a Bible believing, uh, Christian. And, uh, this helped, helped solidify all of her beliefs. Wow. And it literally brought wow. her into tears. Just go, uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, D I T R H or, um, on the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app and just search 102-year-old, 102. Uh -huh. Just search 102-year-old woman. Um, and the video will come up, watch it. And it went, it went, got on hundreds of channels. It went mm. super okay, viral. So could that, but could that have been a specific thing for wherever she was raised, whatever school she went to, whatever? Yeah, like, public school it was still... in Connecticut. So, oh, okay. so then we went further. Uh -huh. We found other people um, that were talking about in Croatia in the 1930s, they were teaching Flat Earth. Uh, some places on Earth are still teaching it today. Uh, in in uh, um, I think in Saudi Arabia they still talk about flat Earth. Um, the, these uh, Arab guys built this incredible physical model of the Earth with the sun and the moon. It's amazing. It's also on my channel. Uh, but we found a guy in Mexico who lived in the northern United States, and he said in the 1950s they were teaching globe and flat because they didn't know. Huh? Oh, they didn't wow. know. In 1927, Universal Pictures started with their spinning globe at the beginning of their movies, a right. beautiful globe, right? And no one had been to space to figure out the shape. Then when NASA went up, they came out in 1972, the first photo of Earth, it looked exactly like what Universal did. <laughs> it's just a coincidence, right? Universal is just really good at map making, well, I think. Well, Disney did something like that, too. <laughs> You know, back when Disney started, too, they had their little globes. And my uncle was saying how he remembers going to Disneyland and they took him on this ride to show him this is what Earth looks like. And they had no idea at the time. Huh. So. Yeah. I didn't realize that. So. So you're saying that like 100 years ago, they already had pictures of what the globe looked like. Is it? I And, and then and then when NASA went into outer space to take their pictures, it looked the same as that? It looked exactly the same as what the Universal Pictures had imagined. What is that? Is that because, like, could they have, could, I mean, maybe this is a dumb question, but could they have believed, like, could they have been so smart that they were able to do the math without going into outer space and seeing, like, could, like they traveled, right? Glow, so you have all these travelers. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't let, wait, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Cause I can, don't know. You, I'm, I'm asking you, why, why, he's, why he's talking. You grab my phone because the, the Wi-Fi went off and I'm trying to pull up a picture while he's talking. I'm going to, while you're doing that, Chris question Just for you. It. Could, uh, is it possible? Cause Chris is a very critical thinker, I would say. And he thinks about a lot of this stuff. If, if there were, um, land travelers, I don't know, whoever you want to think about right now, hundreds of years ago, could they have decide, discovered what the globe, the global earth looks like back then without going in and actually snapping a picture of it or seeing it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Like an actual globe. Could you. And the maps back then were always flat. The maps back then were always, it was a, it was a sheet of paper, right? It was a big, so, so what I'm saying. Right, right. So, but what I'm saying, but this is what I'm saying though. What I'm saying is. Back then, like the World's Fair, all of that stuff, there was an image of a globe. And this was yep. before NASA. This is before they figured anything out, before they could go anywhere and really explore the actual global Earth, right? So you have a picture of it. These are where the con this is where everything is positioned. And then NASA goes up, they discover this, and now they're they're like, Yep, it's confirmed. And you look at this two different pictures and you're going, oh, these are exactly the same. They knew it way back then before they had the technology to know for sure. And once NASA does have the technology now, they were right. What are the chances of that? Wouldn't that be, they would, so you're saying, what'd you well, say? Well, did they make the globe based on the, that, what's so, his name? Aristoceses or whatever. Aristoceses. Yeah. No, that was just, yeah. the, size, yeah. that was just yeah. the size of the earth. Um, I don't know how they made it, but they made it in Photoshop. That's for sure. So the picture that was on Who everyone. Who made it in Photoshop? So Robert Simmon, a NASA visual artist. Remember when the iPhones first came out, everyone had the earth on it. Yeah. And that's called the blue marble. This was this picture, but we zoomed in on it and we can see that they Photoshopped the clouds. You can see the same clouds repeated again and again and again. So he was interviewed. Yeah. You look at Wait, those are yeah. from different. Wait this a minute. Is a, this is those, this, are those are clouds. Those are clouds. These are the clouds. How I do just, you know those I'm are clouds? I'm just zooming into this area. 
See these clouds on the earth? Clouds on the earth. Yeah, I don't know if those are clouds. Okay. Those what do you mean? Don't know if those are clouds. They well, they're white. <laughs> they're, what else? Well, what? I don't know because you're you're so far away. Whatever from the they earth, are, how could they're you see stepped those? and repeated. They're repeating themselves. So they're <laughs> land. That's worse. Yeah. But they're clouds. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So all right. So all right. he all did right. an interview and he said, um, "Yeah, I created it in Photoshop. I was just given strips of data, and I was like, well, there's more plankton in this area, so I made that green, and this is a desert.'" So so I made that brown and he said he used <laughs> command X a lot and uh, he he literally made it in Photoshop. NASA comes out with um, eight photos of Earth. Which one do you like? Because eight of seven of them have to be fake, if, if not all eight. Why? Because they're all different. OK. OK. But they're they, they're different angles. Well, they're 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 different angles, but they're, they're showing different land. So, for example, the, the problem you have here is this is the famous shot from 2012, I think. Okay. And we can see the United States and Mexico. Where's the rest of the land? So here's the thing. We don't know how big anything is unless we can actually measure it. So we can drive across Mexico and Baja and figure out that it's 934 miles. Mm -hmm. So they tell us the radius of the earth is 7,917. So I'd have to be able to fit eight and a half of those red segments in between the radius, which goes right off the page. So that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make it. It doesn't make it. You know, that's another uh, wizard trick that they do. They mm -hmm. make it so crazy that people go, that doesn't make any sense. Therefore, I'm going to defer to uh, the experts because I can't figure it out. The reason you can't figure it out is because you can't figure it out because it's stupid. Okay. <laughs> right. right. I remember this picture in 27, 2017. They said glo the global, um, global dimming, you know, the pollution. It's, oh, it's yeah. horrible. <laughs> it's pollution. horrible. Right. And uh, from nineteen seventy, where are the same clouds? Oh, I see. Them. Look at the same I clouds. See I see. They, look at the bottom one. They look use the, the same clouds. One. Yeah. Why would they use the same clouds? Because either they're lazy or it's revelation of the method, which means they always have to tell us what they're doing and give us a chance to figure it out. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sorry for being. I, I don't want to keep. I don't want to beat a dead horse. But <laughs> show me that picture one more time. That which you just, one? The what well, you just we were looking at the clouds just now. Right there. Yeah. yeah. So so the reason I'm saying I don't know is because I'm trying to imagine myself in a in a spaceship going so far away from the Earth, a million and miles. And, Okay, and trying to see clouds. these giant clouds from that Thank far away. You. Absolutely. <laughs> when we send balloons up to 120,000 feet, 20 miles, the whole earth is white. No, It listen, becomes white. I know, but Dave, listen to what I'm saying. I'm trying to find out if you're that far away from the earth, how do you know? I feel you made me feel stupid a minute ago for, saying, for asking this question. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to ask and it I might one do more, it again. Go ahead. I'm going to ask one more time. It, how do you know that those are clouds? I understand they're white, they're fluffy. I get it, but... Has have That's they? That's the topography of the of the earth. Look, there's babe. the United States. Yeah, I know. What are those? What, so is what that do you think they are? So bubbles? <laughs> See, you're making me feel stupid again. Well, I'm just asking a question. Well, what, did, what would you Be think? It what would you think I they are? I don't know because I would think that if you're looking from that far away of a perspective, you would be seeing things that you're not sure what it is. But you're saying you would only see water or land. Or clouds. Well, uh, we know that when we send a balloon up, the whole, the earth is muted. The colors are muted because you're looking through so much atmosphere. The colors just become white. We send a balloon up to 120,000 feet. It's just white. You can't really see anything. But yeah. somehow we get these vivid colors in space and all these different sizes and everything. Because it, of it, technology. It, it's. Well, they're like, well, they they boosted up the colors. I don't I don't know what they're doing. So th this is just another one without you know going. They they showed us this picture of Earth, and this is we can we can look at the land features here, and we say, okay, on a world map, this is just this section of land. That's oh. what we're showing. Okay. So you have I to believe see. that all of this other land is on the other side of that ball. Right. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to just remember this. We're over here. Uh -huh. So the United States and Russia and Australia and New Zealand and South America, it's all on the other side of the ball. OK. OK. And right. they only have that much. Right. Because the Earth is spinning so fast that when they snap their picture, no, no, it's, that's it's, all they could capture. It's moving wild. Wait, once hold a day, up. So you, hold can, up. you can't even see. You can't even see. But um, OK. But is, so hold on. The hold on. Is so then the in 2012, the other picture, they showed us this. So now you got the United States. So that's just this. All of this has to be on the other side right now. The reason you can't figure it out is because it's unfigure outable. <laughs> Wait, what? This is an official picture from NASA. A picture. NASA will never say photograph when they talk about the Earth because they don't want to lie. 
Wait, is that the actual size? So that's the size over here this is of the, everything this else. This is the size of all the and other things. And that's the United States? That's the United States and Mexico. And so you can see this I'm much showing of the you, ball. I'm showing you what they're showing. From the angle. And all the of water, this is on the other side. The land. But remember, we had a circle over here right. showing the other. And then there's all of no that was way on the that other. could fit. There's no way. The wow. reason you can't figure it out that's is because it's unfigure pretty, outable. Uh, listen, <laughs> that's pretty nuts. Well, no, it's because the Earth is spinning so fast Can when they take their from over picture. Here? That's all that shows yeah. up, <laughs> right? <laughs> it goes. It, it it goes on, dude. That's. I'm gonna stare at that when when this is finished and we put that we implement that back mm -hmm. into the thing. I'm really gonna look at that more. That's crazy. That's right. really interesting. Do you have There's a question, no, Nick, or you think then, something? So hang on. So NASA. <laughs> People, uh, people yeah. will go, hey, sh Nick, come here for a sec. I want you to just see this Phil, real quick. Come Phil, too. you can come too. Hold on. You guys come. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Wait, no, don't go. ruin my shot. No, no, no. You're in front no, of my camera. No, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Go, can you I'm go back to the other one? All right. For, well, this why, is well, just okay. why we're here. Just watch this, this is guys. from the space station. You can tell because there's always a little piece in front of the camera. They, they always you know, do I'm that. But if we yeah. look at yeah, the Earth map and we see that's just that little circle right there, that landmass. Is just that little circle. <laughs> it's not so, the whole earth. So that's just that little circle. This is a fisheye lens. This is from an airplane. So yeah. that's from them. This is from who NASA. took that shot, supposedly, yeah. right? They took that that's shot. Weird. Yeah. And then the other one we were just looking at was, what, was this. That's, all of, that's all of this land has to be on the other side of that ball. That, dude, come on. That's, that's, yeah, that's pretty... Okay. Well, not to mention you got all the other the uh, more water right. on the other side of that ball, right? Yeah, How would they explain that would be there. They don't. They don't explain it. They don't explain it. Okay, but but wait a minute. They have to explain it. If you talk to somebody and no, you, they you had don't. to have talked to people they who don't. are serious, they won't globers. explain it. Okay, then what do they say when you say that? They won't talk to. Really? Yeah. They don't just don't know what to say. Yeah. They change the subject. They, they who who am I going to talk to? Right. Well, who are you going to talk to? You talk to a lot of people. Yeah. Who believe that the Earth is a globe? So that's but my question. How that, do you they, stump they, them? They, they just they just short circuit and they change the topic. They we call it scattering. They scatter okay. to the next thing that they believe proves the globe. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. That is pretty mm -hmm. crazy. Isn't that? Nuts? That's that was really that's that is really weird. Yeah. Oh, Nick just asked a great question. Are there any astronomers or scientists that that believe that it's there? Flat? We have some engineers. We have tons of pilots. So I think that by the end of uh, 2024, all pilots will be flat earthers. You know why? Think about this. The, wait, hold up. All wait. pilots, all commercial pilots will be flat earthers within one year. Mark my words. <laughs> what? Okay, let me explain why. All right, yeah. Let me explain why. Yeah, yeah. So let's pretend that you're a flat earther. Let's pretend that you're full on the earth is flat. You've discovered it and you're like, this is the most amazing thing. And you you understand the reason why. And it's literally changing your life. Now you're in a car for five hours with a friend who's not a flat earther. What are you going to talk to him about? Weather, football, or flat earth? Flat earth. Yeah. Flat earth. Yeah. And you're yeah, going to tell him all of this stuff uh, that you've learned and you're going to have a conversation. Yeah, it's by a the big, end of that car drive, topic. he's going to probably be like, I got to look into this more. Well, there's a ton of pilots that are flat earthers. And when they're in their plane, they take off, they go up, hit cruise control. They got like 10 hours, you know, however long the flight is. Their co pilot, if he's not a flat earther, they're, they're turning them. They're, <laughs> these pilots are telling <laughs> me that they're, they're doing this. Oh, wow. Yeah, really? They're bringing, up, they're, they're bringing up stuff and showing them. And, have you talked to some pilots? Uh, I have a, a, a dozen in my phone book from major airlines that have been talking with me, yeah. and they're they're quiet about it because they'll be grounded. Oh. We interviewed a KLM pilot on Globusters, and the next day she was grounded, mm. and uh, because she was showing how scientifically, you know, airplanes fly straight and level over the Earth plane. They fly straight and level. They don't nose down to follow a curve. Right, the SR seventy one, the the spy plane goes twenty three hundred miles per hour. I think that's the speed. At that speed, right, you're flying over a ball, you have to nose down or you're going to fly off into space, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, guess sorry. how much they have to nose down okay. every second to follow the curve of the Earth if the Earth was a ball the size that they tell us? Eight every inches. second? How, how far? 80, 80, 80 stories. Oh, wow. 800 feet per second just to follow the curve of the Earth. You'd feel that. You would be plastered against the ceiling and dead. Right. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so... Okay, but they want so, you to believe that gravity is holding you. It's grabbing you. Gravity. I, I call it gravity. Yeah, that, I was going to say, that's what I heard recently yeah. was that the, it automatically, the, the nose tips down because of gravity. No. Okay. Not but, true. 
Okay. The, so the, so what keeps it? the plane level is a gyro. You know, you, with the things we played with as kids, you the mm -hmm. three axis gyro. So a plane spins up its gyro on the runway, so it's spinning level to the ground. If the plane, so so you got your gyro spinning, and if the plane turns, the gyro shows that they're turning because it's always stays level if the plane goes up or down the gyro will move the gyro holds rigidity in space regardless of gravity that's the definition of a gyro so when you take off from from berlin and fly to to um brazil your you, your gyro should be like that it should be it should you know because it's holding its rigidity from the top of the ball mm -hmm. and you're you're down here, but mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. It it always lands. It's always level. Hmm. It's always level. Air plane, not air globe. Sea level, not sea curve. Hor rise zone, the horizontal eye zone mm -hmm. is horizontal. It's okay, not the curve eye zone. Yeah, but how? So <laughs> yeah, but so how? But why wouldn't they change what? those? Why are those words picked to describe this stuff as opposed to them if they have an agenda? To yeah, I, I create think a new that vocabulary. The, the, well, the English language was um, long before the globe lie, so the oh. you know, the, and our language is uh, is literally the most powerful thing out there. You know, your intent and your language and your feelings was what create this world, create mm. our reality. So they 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 use words to. Um, to cast spells, spelling, right? They're casting spells with Hollywood. What the, you know, wizards use the wood from a holly tree, the, from the Hollywood. So they're casting spells, you know. Television. Tell television, lie vision. Right. Yeah. Um, the, and there's so many. The, the, um, what they, the, you work all week and then at the end you're weakened. And so you, you know, you, and in the, you say good morning, that's good death. And they have all of these words. So you have to be very careful with the words that you use. I'm not so careful sometimes. I do my best. But, you know, as you know, in the car ride, things slip. You know? Yeah, I heard a couple things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple things. Um, but, it, again, it's the intent. You know, people are like, you put 33. You went like that. You know, you right. six, six, six. Um, It's the intent. 33 is not mm -hmm. a bad number. But the, yeah. there are people that use, you know, that's a secret code for the Masons or whatever. Yeah, because right. um, she watches videos all the time and stuff, too. So she's always correcting me on, like, how yeah. I talk. And I talk with my hands. So I accidentally, like, I guess <laughs> flashed the wrong signals or something like that and she's like don't do that don't do that yeah and i'm like i just talk like that i can't i won't do it right now because i'll do it and they'll freeze frame it and go he's a white supremacist yeah so when people <laughs> when i told people i was coming to uh your podcast they're like oh you know are you sure it's not a hit piece because there's so many people trying to do hit pieces <laughs> oh it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy <laughs> a hit and, piece uh, like and now that i'm here i'm looking at the floor going oh my god <laughs> black and white checkers you know this is a masonic yeah. lodge and you know, are we in a masonic no, lodge or are we in a 50s. barn it's right? yeah you said you said that uh, yeah. when you first got here and I'm like geez we've had this carpet for a long time I'm, I'm so um, innocent a, about it I'm like I 1950s even, I like the retro I, I think feel. it has to do with the duality and uh, I don't even know that's Black, so it's, weird. it's a beautiful rug whatever yeah. it's fine I didn't even know what you said I had I had no idea I never heard yeah. that before go look up anything free Masonic Hall all of them have checkered floors so the trolls hmm. are going to run with that one and just that proves that I'm a free Masonic shill here <laughs> you know to, to, to destroy the truth movement but you know um, um, whatever you know choose whatever you want to believe yeah, you know? and, yeah and here's the thing i i love waking people up to this reality because it changed my life you know yeah. i don't yeah. go to work on monday hmm. right i had my own business yeah. i was amazing yeah. i yeah. got out of corporate america started my own business making tons of money and i walked away from it all not for money but for truth because i want a future for my kids yeah and mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. um, and this world mm -hmm. is going uh, in a very scary direction because people are lost in space, spinning out of control. Why? Right. Why do people um, like you were talking earlier about how uh, people feel when they start talking about it and they they discover that the Earth is something different than what they thought it was? Why do they get so yeah. happy or at peace or yeah. excited and pumped? Like you just said, like you, I asked you on the phone um, a few days back. I, I asked you. If you ever get tired of talking about this stuff, because I've seen so many Zoom calls that you've done and stuff, and I'm like, I wonder, never. talk about it over and over and over, never, huh? I look for, I'm learning new stuff all the time, so, you know, uh -huh. and people are like, oh, you know, I, I know, oh, they, like, people that watch my stuff, they're like, they ask a question, they know what I'm going to pull up. The reason I pull up the same thing many times is because these people are new. They need this information. Right. Yeah. But I always try to add new things. But why do people get upset? Nobody likes having their ball taken away. And so you're a child. 
and you're clinging <laughs> to your ball, right? <laughs> you're clinging to your ball. One time in a podcast, I said, I said, everybody loves balls. And that was taken in oh, clips. No. And that was taken in clips so many times. That's okay? funny. <laughs> uh, but nobody likes having their ball taken away. And nobody likes having the rug ripped out from underneath them. Like, if I told you, mm-hmm. hey, your parent, are your parents alive? Yeah. Oh, my mom is. Well, did you know that she's a serial killer? You won't believe me. <laughs> right. But what if she really was? That would just be horrible. You probably wouldn't even want to look at the information and because you, you can't believe it. Right. But that's because you're so ingrained that your mom is a loving, wonderful mother and grandmother mm-hmm. and great grandmother. She is. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to yeah. make me look old on here, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, it could be a sister, you know. It could be your older sister that, Good, yeah, that that's made her great grandmother. That's it. That's it. And um, <laughs> and so the the thing is though, when you have the ball taken away, you land on a solid foundation. You land on God's creation. You land at the center of creation, and then you find out I'm not on a speck of dust flying through a scientifically impossible space vacuum. Right. Scientifically impossible space space vacuum. Well, let's back up because I was kind of going into why the lie. Um, The why the lie is the best question of all. And there's a whole section on my app. You can find it at flatearthdave.com. And it's called why the lie. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, But space. So space is a vacuum, a void of no pressure. That's what we're told. That's what they tell us. Right. Mm -hmm. Everywhere on earth, in every laboratory, in nature, everywhere, high pressure will go to low pressure and equalize. Always, every time. Okay. That's what that's what gases do. Mm-hmm. So if I had a, a big lucite box and I sucked all the air out of it and sealed it off. Now I have a vacuum chamber, mm-hmm. a chamber of no pressure. If I had a valve on the bottom and I opened it up, what's gonna happen? Gonna fill up? The air is gonna violently fill the available space until it's equalized. Mm-hmm. If I turned it sideways, it would still do the same thing. If I turned it up, it would go down, right? If I did it at 10,000 feet or 100,000 feet, it would still equalize instantly. Mm -hmm. Instantly. Air needs a container. Gases need a container to be contained. You can't have air pressure without a container. Now, the global argument is, well, you know, go to top of Everest, the air is thinner because it gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner until there's no air and then it's a vacuum that's their only thing and gravity's holding it down gravity's holding it down but butterflies can fly and i can hold my arms up and butterflies i can butterflies are lighter than butterflies are lighter than what i don't know yeah are, are, are clouds lighter <laughs> than dry air are clouds lighter than dry air they have water in them they have millions of tons of water in them how could they be lighter than dry air why do they float I don't know. Dude. I don't. Yeah. Density and, and, and by the way, listen, yeah. I don't know is a great answer. Globers yeah. say they know everything and they know nothing. Right. I don't know is a fine answer. We don't know. Uh, and I, we have a, a, there's a lot of ways to explain why clouds float, why things go down. Buoyancy and density sort everything else out. Uh, if I had a, a handful of rocks and a helium balloon and ping pong balls, and I held them over a pool and opened my hand, everybody can sort out what would happen. The helium balloon would go up because it's less dense than the air. The rocks and the ping pong balls would go down because they're more dense than the air. The rocks would go to the bottom oh. of the pool and the ping pong balls would stay on top of the water because the ping pong balls oh. are less dense than the water and the rocks are more dense. It's because of the, the density Buoyancy of the object. Buoyancy and density. Correct. But what makes things go down? Why don't they go sideways? Gravity. Right? Well, well, that's what they say. Yeah. But gravity... This is a big one, and this is the one. It's going to take a minute to talk about it. It's worth it. It's not that complicated. Gravity is only a theory. The Neil deGrasse Tyson said, you know, hey, Neil, what's gravity? And he goes, we don't know. You know, and <laughs> the gravity model, when they start looking in, into planets and everything, they're like, there's not enough gravity out there. It's just 97% of it's missing. Mm-hmm. Right. So the gravity model doesn't work because 97% of it's missing. So instead of throwing out the theory of gravity, they go, Dark matter and dark energy. No one's ever seen it. No one's ever measured it. But it has to be there for gravity to work. So therefore, it's there. So you lend me $100. I need $100 right now, and I'll pay you back tomorrow. Tomorrow, you see me at the meetup, and I give you $3. I go, we're even. You go, what do you mean? And I go, oh, no, there's the $3. There's 97 dark dollars. Okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, it's right. fine. Trust it's me, they're fine. there. Yeah. Right? Because if you're a scientism believer, that's fine. That's a fine deal. We're even. So, <laughs> so, so here's the thing. You've heard science say that gravity is a very weak force. Very weak force. Okay, I'll buy it. You know what else science says? Is huh? that the electrostatic charge, electrostatic force is 10 
to the 36 power stronger than gravity. What is it? You don't even know what that means, right? No. no. 10 with 36 zeros. Yeah. But you can't yeah. even fathom what that is. And I'm going to explain why you can't fathom it in a second. Okay. But 10 to the 36 power stronger. So electrostatics is when a negative attracts a positive or vice versa. Well, the earth is a negative charge. Measurable, testable, scientifically provable negative charge. And everything in the air is, positive. is surrounded by positive and it goes down because the electro, the flow of electricity is down to the earth. So it just sets the direction. And then the, this is more dense than the air and it goes down to my hand and I catch it. 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity. What does that mean? So do you know how long 1 trillion seconds is? No. Take a guess. And if you guess it within a month, a month, I'll give you a, a Bitcoin. <laughs> Go ahead. Chris got it. Don't, don't do quiet. <laughs> <laughs> one trillion seconds. Uh, seconds? You, yeah. want, you want me to tell you how long how it is? How long is one trillion seconds? It, it, is, it, is by it way a, of what? Hour? Uh, like, like, you're going to make it years, decades, whatever you want. One trillion like seconds. 10,000 years I'm going to say. Like I don't know. He's asking me. Okay. Yeah, I'm asking you. Okay. Um, I'm going to say <laughs> one trillion seconds. Let me see. 60. How long do I got to figure this out? That's it. Time's up. Three seconds. Right. Two <laughs> seconds. One second. I'm going to say like uh, 10 years. Very close. 31,000 years. <laughs> Very <Okay>? close. <laughs> I was closer than <laughs> you. So, so is it 31,000 years? One trillion seconds is 31,000 years. And here's the thing. You can go verify that yourself instantly. Just do a little calculation. Okay. 31,000 years. You can't fathom what 31,000 years is. Here's no. the problem. 10, 31,000 years, 10, 1 trillion seconds is 1 trillion is 10 to the 12th power. If I add one more zero on that, it's a thousand times more than that. Wow. Right. Okay. Well, All right. Wait. So now I'm going to add 36 zeros. You can't fathom what that is. If I had a hundred pound metal plate and the only thing pulling it down was gravity, which uh -huh. is one, which is 10 to the 36 power less powerful than the electrostatic flow, it would float forever. It would never move because okay. there's no force. So okay. that's them telling us that gravity has no force. We can manipulate things to go up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done it in almost every interview. Um, we can add a negative charge to something and it goes up in the air. It floats. Mm -hmm. oh. Electrostatics. Like the oh. TRC-3B, whatever that spy plane, it, it, it floats in the air. It's electrostatics. right? And then we could add a positive charge to something and it falls down. We have something floating on a, you know, helium balloon's got it neutrally buoyant, mm -hmm. and we add a positive charge to it, it goes down. So we're playing with the electrostatics. We're changing the, the, the But you can, you can, but you can mess with that. You can, if I jump, I'm going to go up. I'm you're eventually going to come but, down. But you're but in this positive it, it, field. It doesn't mean, but it doesn't mean that gravity doesn't exist, right? No. Well, gravity, if gravity existed, mm -hmm. so I've got, and we can prove the electrostatic force exists. The electrostatic force is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity. If I drop something, how would one assume that it's gravity, which and doesn't it, gravity the, if the electrostatic force, if gravity made things go down, the electrostatic force, everybody would be dead. We'd all be just, we'd mm. all be dead. Mm. So when you start wrapping your mind around that and understanding, you know, that gravity is just pseudoscience and the, the core of the earth is just made up nonsense. And, you know, the idea that we're, you know, when you watch the sunset, you're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound. No. Watch, go on the app, go to where does the sun go? There's video after video after video, time lapse after time lapse, stuff that you don't, no one's, everyone's too bored. Everyone's like too rushing around. You don't, you're not going to sit well, there I, and I mean, examine what's going on in the sky. Here's the other thing too, though, Dave, I think people are going to assume like, why would they, why would they be doing this? Like, I want to get into like the reasoning behind some of this stuff. Cause it doesn't make to a lot, to most people, Got including it. me, like it, you think about it and you go, why? It's there's so much work to try to create this whole fake world. Yeah. Why would anybody do that? So just a quick thing about me um, before 2014. And, and for me to say this now is um, it, it's like I look back and like, how could I have ever thought that? But I was a full on atheist. I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in a creator. I believed in evolution. Once upon a time, there was nothing. Wow. Lightning struck and mm -hmm. turned, made an amoeba. And the amoeba turned into a fish. And the fish grew <laughs> legs. And it climbed out of the water. And it found another sexy fish. And it had a monkey. And then that monkey went up into a tree and had a human. I can't right? believe people believe that. I, it, it's, well, because that's what we were told before we had the ability to think. Oh. 
That's what mm. we were told before. And we were told by uh, teachers, which are, um, we look up to them. You know, when you go to school, you think your teacher's your God, you know, or you, you, it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's like, wow, I'm going to learn. And, and that, that's, that's what they try to do. So I believed all of that. And then when I discovered that the earth was flat, not the shape, intelligently designed. Right. Now I'm an intelligently designed earther, which right. is level. And I had to, I look back and I said, whoa, there's a creator. And then my relationship with the creator grew from that. Here's what scared me from the creator. I went to a, a young life. Um, I, I grew up in a Jewish family, but non-practicing. And, okay. and, you know, uh -huh. and, and all the kids uh, in my town were all, you know, Christians and uh, you know, not even that heavily practicing. I just, I grew up in Fairfield County. And uh, in junior high, they had a group called Young Life, which was retreats for um kids and i wanted to go on this and i i just i said i'm going they're going to bermuda they're going to great places so i went and uh during the day they have a little bible study i'm like okay i'm at my first bible study ever and the first thing they read was they they read a passage you, you might know the passage where the stars fell to the earth mm -hmm. and i'm like that's stupid a star is the size of this barn and the earth is a pebble how could a star fall to the earth and i discounted the bible for my entire life until 2014 Wow. How big is a star? Talk a, about that. A, star, a lot of people aren't like going to know. A, if, a, if our sun was a yoga ball, the earth is a BB. But other stars make our yoga ball look like a minuscule, minis, like a piece of dust. Mm. Because are all, they're so much bigger. Are all of the stars that big? Well, they tell us that, you know, Betelgeuse is a thousand times bigger than our sun. And then yeah. this other one makes Betelgeuse, you know, is a million times bigger than Betelgeuse. And they're, they're just... They tell us that all the stars are different sizes, but we look up on the sky and all the stars are the same look size. The same. Yeah. They're all the same, and they <laughs> never they never cross each other due to parallax, even though they're all moving in different directions. They'd probably say that there's some stars that are further away, and they they, further, they say you know. that. So all of so, the bigger ones are farther away, and all the smaller ones are closer. That puts us in a special position, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is uh, this is a funny topic. It wow. really is the whole the wow. whole the whole globe thing. So, so the 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 idea. So so, I realized that the world is intelligently designed. There's a creator, and that's where my life changed. Mm -hmm. Everything changed. Really? From yeah. Awesome. Everything wow. Changed. So this is something. Would you'd say that this belief and discovery has brought you closer to? The creator, closer Thousand, to God. A million times. Wow. I, 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 it has changed my life completely. Now, I, I'm, I have my own. Here's the thing. People are like, well, Dave, what about this? What about that? I, what I say is I don't want to know about the details of your sex life. I don't want to know about the details. That's your own personal thing. Your relationship with the creator is your personal relationship. And so what I found my calling is, is to find people like I used to be and show them that the earth is intelligently designed. And mm -hmm. then they realize there's a creator and that's where we draw the line. The rest is your own. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to set an example of what your relationship with the creator is for that person and let them pick up on that, I highly encourage it. But, you know, I, I've had people come to me, you know, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. That just pushes people away. That just right. pushes people away. If you want to set an example for somebody, set an example for somebody. Don't tell them what to do. There's some great Christians in uh, in in the Flat Earth Movement. Rob Skibo, rest in peace. Uh, he was great. He never, ever, you know, tells anybody. He just shows by example. And uh, there's a whole bunch. Robbie Davidson and uh, Pastor Dean Odell. Uh, yeah. And everyone has everyone has their their own style. So you learn yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. You learn these things. <laughs> it looks like you're going to elaborate. I was going to elaborate. Are you going to elaborate? <laughs> Listen, I have my flaws. Everyone has their flaws. And you're what right. I say is, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Keep the yeah. good information yeah. and yeah. ignore the other. You know, just let let it let everyone everyone go. We're all human. Yeah, as they Jesus tells us. You know, we all aren't mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah, right. So, so getting back to to the point. So that brought me to understanding that there's a creator. And then I found out, you know, where I was talking about the atmosphere can't be stuck to a ball spinning and you can't have, you know, everywhere on earth, as I was showing gases expand to fill a space, except in space, gases collapse to create giant burning furnaces in a vacuum. 
<laughs> right? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. We look at these like like the so and so nebula. This is where stars are being produced, and it's dust and gas in space. How do you have dust and gas in space collapsing, creating suns? And what does it pop them out like a ping pong ball machine, and it goes and finds its spot in the in the galaxy? <laughs> like like if it's creating stars, wouldn't they all just merge into one star? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. But but mm-hmm. they tell us this stuff as a fact. And then we just have to believe it because they have the degree. But why? why what's okay. the, what, what is the point of all this? So the point of all of it is that there's a chapter in uh, the Bible, a verse that says, um, once you see my creation, you can no longer deny my existence. And that is a fact. Mm-hmm. I was a denier until I saw that this place was intelligently designed. Right. And I can no longer deny the creator. Uh, and the people, and I call them people liberally, that run this world – uh, are there, they hate God and they are mm-hmm. trying to, um, hide God from you because if everybody woke up to flat earth tomorrow, yeah. everybody wakes up to the creator and they're uncontrollable. Yeah, they right. can't control people that have a connection to the creator. Now, go ahead. Well, I just want to say, but, um, on another note, it seems like the global, the idea of the global earth has, I don't know if you want to use a word infiltrated maybe, but it has come into the church where Christians Churches like, I mean, Global everybody believes this. Church, <laughs> for example, yeah. So, so it, would you say? I mean, ha, how has that brought people away from the Creator when it's such a such a major part of who we all are, even within the church? I think there's so much corruption in the churches. You know, I'm not saying that your church or your pastor. I think that they all, a lot of them have great intentions, but they're also brainwashed into the globe model. And, uh, you know, if you don't see, you could be a good person, have a great job, have a great life, have great children, have a great pastor and learn great stuff and be kind to other people. That's great. But you're missing the big picture. You're missing that we're at the center of creation, that our thoughts create our reality. You know, when you pray, you're bringing those things in the the this world i the way i look at it is we are all parts of god we're all like neurons in the mind of god and we're having this physical experience here in this avatar this meat suit and we're uh, on our our job here if we allow it is to expand the mind of god and i i i'm convinced that a lot of people are depressed and have problems in their life because their soul their their true self is trying to talk to their brain, their mind that's stuck in the television, stuck in the news, which is steering your mind. News is an acronym for North, East, West, South. It's steering, it's steering your mind. I didn't know that. Well, it, never heard that before. Uh, well, there you go. You heard it in a breaking news. <laughs> did you breaking know that? <laughs> did you know that? Well, I did. You did. Of course yeah, you did. Of course. She did. She's been Shame paying attention. Yeah. And so, so when, when you uh, understand that uh, you're now at the center of creation, I'm not on a spec spinning through a scientifically impossible space vacuum where an asteroid can take us out, where we're running out of uh, resources, we're overpopulated, there's no food, right? This place is magical. It's amazing. Your thoughts attract everything, good thoughts and bad thoughts. The the world doesn't care. You have bad thoughts, you're going to attract that into your life. You have good thoughts, you're going to attract it into your life. So when, uh, when when you understand that that you're at the center of creation, that your thoughts create your reality. When you understand that um, there's more, there's abundance. What if you had a a device, uh, something the size of a roll of quarters that heated your house, powered your car and air conditioned your house and you never need to replace it. And 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 you have it for your whole life. Would that free up? Would you have to go to work on Monday? You know, you know, people like where, you know, well, what about food? You can take a seed that your great grandmother put in a jar in your garage a hundred years ago. You can stick it into the earth. Then the most precious substance on earth will fall from the sky, water, and food will grow out of the ground. You can't make up stories like this, right? This is, this is a intelligently designed, mm-hmm. amazing world. Mm. There is no overpopulation. They're lying about the population, by the way. I think it's less than half of what they say mm-hmm. um, because they want us to believe we're overpopulated. But every family can have an acre in Australia, and I think half of Australia would be empty, right? And that's the rest of the world would be empty. That's, that's crazy. Right? It, 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 then look at all the land around here. But I, I mean, but I, how, I had a garden tw- 10 feet by 20 feet. No, 8 feet by 12 feet, two raised gardens. I fed my whole neighborhood. Right. I fed mm. my whole neighborhood. 
Wow. I feel like a lot of people, though, have that appreciation for God's earth and what we can do with it and the rain and gardening and all of that stuff. They just think that we're a ball. Yeah, and that's 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 fine. They're missing some of the pictures, but the majority of the world is lost. They have doubts. They doubt creation, right? True. But I no, can that's no longer doubt creation. Now, I can think— I don't like I this see. about creation. I, I, why did he do this? Why, why did that happen? What, mm-hmm. you know, I can go, but I can't deny creation. Mm-hmm. Do you think that having the, um, being skeptical of so many things before, because earlier you were talking about before you come to this realization, yeah. you were going down the rabbit trail and all of that. So you were already skeptical about some things that you felt like you were being lied to anyway. So did that help or contribute to opening <laughs> your mind to this? It, it's funny, you know, because I, I would wake people up to some of the big hoax events and they'd go right back to sleep after a while. They're like, well, you know, this administration is going to change. You know, that happened because of this circumstance, <laughs> you know, but whatever. Yeah. But then when you wake someone up to the globe lie, they never let it go. It literally becomes an obsession because it affects every single person every single day. Like, like, like it, it, it's this topic Every single person on earth is interested in it, whether they know it or not. Uh-huh. A lot of people are so blinded, you know, mm-hmm. and getting back to the the, 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 I was talking about the depression. So your soul is trying to talk to your mind and it, your mind's listening. Your soul is where the depression comes from. And, and you're like, I, I can't take it anymore. This person's so lost and, and they get, you get depressed and then they get into drugs or whatever. Mm-hmm. All things. And I've seen the flat earth awakening, take people out of drug addiction, wow. out of depression. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen it lift them up. I was a happy guy before. I was doing really well. You know, I went to college. I went. I worked in corporate America. Uh, I I I created my own position in this corporation. I took it. I took my division to the top of the corporation. I left there. I started my own company. Right? They don't teach you how to do that in school. They yep. want you just working for the corporations. And I was making more money. I like. I, I made um a vision board after years and years and years of denying vision boards. I made a vision board and I wrote all these things that I wanted on it. And uh, the one of the last things I wrote is I want my, I want to be the CEO of my own company. And I giggled because I didn't even know what a CEO did. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then five years later, I found myself in my office f- settling the books for the month. And I'm wow. like, wait a minute, I'm the CEO of my own company. And, uh, so I had everything. I had the alleged American dream and I was pretty happy. Uh, you know, I, my good kids and, mm. and, uh, and it just, life was really great. And I was looking into these deceptions of the world and I decided to walk away from it all because it was conflicting with my business. You know, truth seeking, mm. uh-huh. um, was, you know, is frowned upon these days <laughs> uh, some, sometimes. And so I walked away from it all and I have to tell you that, you know, I couldn't have done this by myself. Somebody's got my back. And um, and I'm waking up lots of people along with all of the other great people like I like I make lots of content, but 90 plus percent of the content is other people's content that I'm just packaging and talking about. And mm. we collaborate and it's not about me at all. This is literally about saving ourselves. If we're playing on their ball field, on their monopoly board with their monopoly money in their fake world, we have to follow their fake rules. Right. But if we go back to nature, to God's world, we're divine. We have natural rights mm-hmm. and we all have that. And they they can't take that from us, but they can trick us into giving it away. Everything is a trick to mm-hmm. make you go down their path on their rules. You're born. You had your kids. What'd you do? You, 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 you signed away. a birth certificate. Yeah. You signed them away. And now, now they're traded on the stock market as a commodity. Right. And, uh, and all of this stuff is not how this place was intended to be, but the hijackers of this world, the evil, I don't know what word you want to use, but you know, um, Satanists, whatever devil Mm -hmm. worshiping, whatever. Um, they're literally trying to steal your soul. You know, they steal your soul like fishing with the soul lure system. Mm. Creepy. Wow. That's scary. (laughs) It's not scary. Nothing's scary. When you're a flat earther, you're yeah. not scared of anything anymore. <laughs> wow. I mean, if you're a glober, you have to worry about asteroids. You have oh, to worry true. about global warming. Yeah. You have to worry about running out of food, <laughs> running out of oil. Right? Right. Oil is abiotic. We shouldn't be using oil. 
right? There's free energy in the air. Tesla proved that with his Warden Tower in Long Island, powered the World's Fair wirelessly. And JP Morgan's like, wait a minute, what am I going to do with all this wire? I got, uh-huh. I got the corner, market cornered on copper wire. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and how are we going to control these people if they have free energy? And, you know, there was airships here, airships that hold thousands of people that traveled all around the world. What happened to them? What are you what? talking about? Yeah, in the in the eighteen you know hundred. Wait, I want to talk about. I want to talk about this. Let's continue this in yeah. a second because I gotta pee. They can you what? To pee? I gotta. It. I gotta pee. I'll allow and it. if you have to, it's okay. Right. In a little bit, you could say it. You could go to the back of the barn. I'm not I gotta go, go to the house. You gonna go to the house? <laughs> I'm not being out there. Right? Are we stopping Quit. recording? Yeah. Are we? What did you say, Chris? Not pictures. pictures. There's pictures videos. Of what? What are you talking? And blueprints. About? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Airships. What? Okay, there's not videos. Yes, there are. Of. Yes, there are. What's a fact? All right, go <laughs> pee. Wait, wait. Are we? Are, are we? Gotta, are we? Are we? Are we no, stopping we're going to stay. If I go pee, I'm going to go to the back of the barn. Go I understand. pee, and we're going to continue having the conversation. Right, then I'm going to sneak back. Do in. I need to stop recording no, to be in sync no, with you? No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. We're leaving everything the way it is. Go pee. Does anybody want to take my place? You got a question, Nick? Phil, do you want to sit here and ask any questions? Sit. Come, come here. Come here, Nick. Come here. Come, come here, real fast. Come here, fast. <laughs> sit next to Sherry while I pee, but I'm gonna go outside to do it, <laughs> and then you ask questions. <laughs> All right. Tell us so about this is airship. the first time I heard about the airships too. Yeah. Right? So Are they uh, like blimps. Uh, it, well, uh, what is a blimp? You know, you, everyone thinks of the Goodyear blimp, and everyone right. thinks of the the Hindenburg, which is a psyop, right? The the Hindenburg, uh, they they used it to demonize hydrogen. So now we have to use helium. But guess who controls all the helium in the world? NASA. NASA. Right? Mm. NASA. Why are they using all that helium? What are they doing? Are they floating ships up into the sky and making <laughs> them look like rockets? <laughs> oh, don't Whatever you do on my app, don't hit the rocket balloons button and watch those videos. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. But um, there's actual video and diagrams and trips and narration of ships that hold thousands of people that traveled around the world, what? carried so cool. cargo um, all over the place. They were, they were filling the skies. They used to dock to the Empire State Building and other towers, the, the, the Eiffel Tower, and um, they docked to ships. The ships could have a tower on them. And they were everywhere, and they've hidden that from us. So they, they had, but why? Why would they yeah, hide them? Because, because if you had a ship that can float, that doesn't need to be refueled, because they had, uh, I, uh, some people, I think that they had what's called a, um, uh, a radium engines. You, they used radium, not plutonium. Radium. And you know what the bi- the the exhaust of a radium engine is? Helium. So it's <laughs> self fulfilling. Right. And so they use it. And so if we had these ships, we can go explore the north and the south where we're not allowed to go physically or virtually. Go on Google Earth on the web version of Google Earth and and draw um, an outline around South America. It'll tell you how many square miles around America, around New Zealand, around everywhere. Then try to do it around the North Pole or around um, the Antarctica. And it it does it. It it flips out. It won't let you measure it because you can't because it's wrong and they don't want you to know. So going back to the airships, is Go. there you can find pictures of it on the You internet? can find video and pictures on my app. Really? Yeah. On on my app, if you go to the to the homeschool okay. button. Okay, so then your your friend who's hundred and two. Yeah. Then her parents would have been aware of this. Well, she uh, that's a great question. Right? And I asked I asked her about the airships and she said she thought she remembered uh-huh. seeing them as a little girl, but she didn't she didn't remember the the, you know, the, the whole idea of um, this, what this world was in the 1800s, the whole Wild West is not true. It's all it's all a lie. Right. The, the, all these buildings and cities oh, yeah. that were founded. What mm-hmm. does founded mean? Does it mean builded or founded? Found. They were found. They were here. They were here before. And then there was a mud flood. Yeah. And there was a mud flood. And and well, you know, and it gets into the giants and, and all sorts of stuff. Right. Um on my app, uh, if you go, there's um there's there's a couple buttons. One of them is my lunch break. And the other one is I'm the improbable dreamer. Um, watch those videos mm-hmm. and get ready, get ready to, to go, you know, every single thing they teach us about biology, geology, and history is a lie. It's mm-hmm. all a lie. The lie is so big that you want to throw your hands up and go, I can't believe any of this. And you want to go back to your little, um, you know, shortened life. Mm-hmm. Right. Remember Truman in the Truman show. Yeah. What's He's one like, of my favorite I want to be an explorer. 
Mm-hmm. And what did the teacher say? You've, Sorry, Truman. You, everything's been discovered. Everything's been discovered. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's what they did. They they literally they they took us and they put us in a in a So if we had this in if we had this capability back then, yeah. why can't we just why isn't somebody doing it now? Because we can't use hydrogen because it's too scary and there's never enough helium except for party balloons and a couple of good year blimps. So a random person How are you gonna do it? Go, well they actually they actually are sorry, there the, are companies I doing missed. cargo um, airlift companies that are that are starting, and I don't know, you know, but they're probably controlled by NASA. Mm. But you you will not be able to go south and uh, and and see Antarctica. I right, because they'll shoot you going. down. So, so, <laughs> so what, did, what did I miss? What are you talking about? What technology? We're the talking about airship. we airships. Airships. Okay. Airships. Air, they're run by helium. Is that what you're saying? Well, helium. helium. I was outside. Yeah, yeah, helium. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are you doing outside? Never mind. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Brian needs to build a bathroom in here. This is ridiculous. I know. We're gonna have to. Wor- I'm gonna have to work on that. I'll talk to Brian and see. We'll get a bathroom put right. in over here. So usually we'll, it's a bunch of guys here. So just one thing they did: they took the flat Earth and they wrapped it around a globe, and that's a prison for your mind. They literally took it, and that white area is huh. just the outline of our shoreline, and they tell you you're not allowed to go here. That's that's uh, off limits because we have to protect the penguins and the you know and the and the ice. Okay, so if Antarctica goes all the way around. Yeah. And only one part is protected. Why can't you go to the other parts? What do you mean? One part's protected. The whole thing is protected. Go back to that thing. So if you go to 60 degrees south, which is out here, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to go beyond it. There's eight different military bases that will stop you from going there. Now, the. But on, on, like, so can you give me that, babe? That globe? You want the globe? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Look at this globe. It's so big. Okay. So if Antarctica is here, right? Yeah. And that's where we can't explore. Yeah, that's where you can't explore. So But you're saying this is flattened down and so, Antarctica goes around like this. So imagine this. A lar- large bodies of water at rest lie flat. Mm-hmm. And so at, why can't I explore this part of I'll, Antarctica? I'll tell you why. That part of this you part of that part. So we, we, water needs containment. A pond needs a shoreline that's higher than the water. The mm-hmm. oceans need a shoreline that's higher than the oceans. And that's Antarctica. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. Right. So if I took this area here and just cut out like a thousand miles outside and wrapped it around a globe, all of that white gets pushed down and creates that, that fake continent. Gotcha. Okay. Right? It creates that fake continent. Um, okay, so if somebody on that map decided to go this direction, they would be stopped, or yeah. that direction, or or you know, right. north, any of those directions. This is a map that was found in a Buddhist temple from ten centuries ago, and it shows us all of these other continents out here. I'm not saying it's real. I'm right. saying we want the right to go explore beyond. Right. I mean, isn't that what Bird found or saw? Well, Bird said he found land. He said Bird said he. Um, Went across from Little America, which is a spot in Antarctica. I thought right. I thought he said Middle America, um, and across the South Pole, and he found land bigger than the United States. That um, that, that would put us here. That would put you over near uh, Australia and and uh, Africa. Don't right. you think they'd find something the size of the United States that was over there? But right here, it would be right over there. But not really. It's out in the outer lands. What if the world looked like this? What if the world looked like this so here we are Mm -hmm. here's uh south america america australia and this is antarctica okay what if there was more land out here what if there was another sun out here that circled around well i think there's only one sun because god only created one sun and one moon but depending on where you are we all see the sun in a position relative to our own so if there's a dome over this whole thing, mm-hmm. if you're out here, you're going to see a sun out there. Mm-hmm. It, it, and I have a bunch of videos showing how we all see the sun in our own. It, it actually makes perfect sense. The sun is within the firmament, but we're seeing a projected point. So out here, that would be extra land. Right. If somebody lived out here on the extra territory, what might you call them? An alien or an ET. <laughs> an extraterrestrial from the extra terra. Right. And where are they coming from? Outer yeah. space, the outer space, mm-hmm. the outer space beyond Antarctica. The outer space. Right, the right, outer right, space. Right, 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 right. That right. nobody's okay. allowed to okay. go to. Yes. Okay. Correct. I just saw a picture. Chris is just showing me a picture. Okay, you of... put this away if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. So, 
Chris just showed me a picture of of uh, the Earth from outer the outer space. The globe uh, above the globe, right? Okay, so how come? But it's nonetheless, it's a picture. A picture is a picture. It might be fisheye, might be showing whatever, yeah. but it still is a picture. Where, why from those pictures can't you see uh, the Antarctica wall? Where's the ice wall? From the from the globe picture? Yeah, because it's a globe. Wait, what's your question? Oh, that was a random person who launched a space balloon because the you camera can't, got you can't, a picture you can't from the get outside. Close enough, you can't see forever. You know, the atmosphere is thick. Going to a big Olympic swimming pool, clear water. Mm -hmm. You try to, you know, look at the other side of the pool wall. You can't see it because the water just becomes opaque over distance. Okay, okay. Air see, does what, the see same what you thing. just said. That's why I had the question earlier. What, what Chris? Wait, what? <clears throat> you could see the land. Yeah, yeah. That's why I had the question earlier when you were showing the pictures of of the globe you were showing this is this much uh united states of america right and then you went these are the clouds i was like how could you see the clouds from that far away so you're saying that you could see those clouds because they've got that's what they've got to be is they've got to be clouds but we couldn't see the we can't see the wall right i oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, that's because you're looking at fake pictures. Right. <laughs> uh, well, but, you're looking at the globe and it's fake pictures. Why would they put the wall in, a, in something me. they're trying to deceive you? They don't want you to know no, about the wall. No, people have lit off, you know, sent up a uh, a balloon, right? It just it, with a camera just to see what it's going to look like from space. They do it. They come back. They look at the footage. People do it all the time. They do it on YouTube. Right. Because so, you, so here's the problem. When you set up a balloon, well, I he's can't He's talking set, about this picture. That's that's the picture from a space from like a, a I balloon. I just showed from a you that that well, I, I showed you on a map that that's a tiny little spot on the globe, and, and it's a tiny little spot. What's a spot? What's a tiny little spot? What do you mean? <laughs> I just showed you. You you you're not you're not you're not paying attention, my friend. Um, tell, <laughs> hold tell on. me again. Show me again. I got to pull it up again. Okay, sorry. Um, no problem. So this picture is from some random guy who no, shot up not. a balloon. That's, that's what not, Chris is saying. Oh, is that from a random guy? I uh, well, but he's got that's a fisheye lens, and it's just. It, I, I'm sure if you looked at all of the map uh, at the at the the land features, you can find it on a globe and the curvature. Anyway, and by the way, if that's a balloon, the space station doesn't even see that much curvature. And they're 250 miles up. That balloon's only 20 miles up. So how did how did it see that much curvature? Oh, that's right? kind of weird. Huh? That kind of weird, <laughs> kind of weird, or provably fake, provably, provably not what they're claiming fake. it is. Yes. I was just gonna say peculiar. Yeah, peculiar. peculiar. <laughs> so yeah. show them the picture we're talking about. Well, it's, this is kind of far away, but can you kind of can you kind of kind of see? Yeah. Right. Huh. Okay. It's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Like um, the the remember when Elon uh, launched the Tesla up? Yeah. In space. This is going to be a good one. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't have the image with me, uh -huh. but um, when you look at the pictures from the from the space station, yeah, they show just a little bit of curve. Sometimes, sometimes they show more curve, but they show a little bit of curve. The Tesla got a full shot of the Earth, full circle. Okay, so you'd have to be pretty far away to see a full circle of the Earth, right? If the space yeah. station can only see a little bit of curve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Space station's 250 miles up. The Tesla was 170 miles up. And it saw the full circle. So what does that wow. tell us? That tells us that at least one of those pictures is a lie. Mm -hmm. One of those videos is a lie. I okay. say both of them are a lie. But you have to admit, okay, Elon is faking putting a Tesla in space. NASA runs SpaceX. Did you know that? Right. NASA is full control over SpaceX. So NASA is lying about a Tesla in space. NASA lies about everything. Well, right. I have a question for you. I really want to know this. So because we're, f I'm not saying one way or another, whatever, I want to like learn more about this, but because there's so much information available to us now, it's getting harder and harder for anybody to hide anything from us. And I will be the first to admit, yeah. um, especially in recent years, my eyes have been open to a lot of things that I kind of took for granted before. Like I always assumed certain things were true and accurate because it's been taught to me, told to me, whatever. And now I'm like, oh, we know that they were lying to us about something and then something else and then something else. 
that makes a society start to question everything, right. especially since 2020. Things People started questioning things like crazy. So now we're questioning things. We have information available to us. What do you think they're going to do when they can't do it anymore? Because great question. In, in in sixty in the sixties, I mean, you could mm-hmm. well we could get into that. We could get into that. But you you believe that that we didn't go to the moon and stuff like that too, right? Correct. I know that we didn't go to the moon. Sorry. Okay. All right. You know that we didn't go to the moon. Okay. So I will admit that when you look into that stuff, it's like pretty weird that we had like no technology available to do something like that, yeah. but somehow we did it and they and called from the phone. And we over the tapes because there was a videotape shortage. Yeah, it convenient. Well, yeah. apparently yeah. we had technology but, if we could float in space floaters yeah. or whatever you and, called them. Yeah, so what do you? What are they going to do though? Because so now you, we're, your answer. they're not going, I know, but listen, they're not going to be able, sorry. <laughs> they're going to freeze frame that, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be able to fake that a second time. So it's not like there's going to be a but moment they in the can future. They can't. No, they can't. People CGI. are going to figure it out, they, man. Because there's, they they fake it a second time and it's so perfect that they're going to be like, wait, what happened back then? And they can't. Like the whole Artemis hmm. thing. They're sending no. They're, they're sending dummies, crash test dummies. Mm-hmm. They're not sending people. Wait a minute! They're sending these regular YouTubers. They're going into space. No, they're not. They're lying. <laughs> they're lying. They're lying. Um, and they always just kick the can down the road. On the app, in the more resources page, um, or in the NASA page. No, the the FE videos, uh, movies. There's one called NASA Going Nowhere Since 1959. It's hysterical. It basically shows you how they say we're going to the moon then administration changes oh we're going to mars and administration changes we're going to the moon and they went to the moon now we're going to mars it's just back and forth back and forth kicking the can down the road and all mm. of it all of it is fake you know and people are like well what about satellites <laughs> excuse me okay what about satellites and we show you that the satellites are not real we show you how they're faking the satellites we actually found their best evidence for our satellites was the Himawari 8 um, satellite which takes a picture of Earth every 15 minutes and shows it with the real weather patterns. And they're like, that's proof. We got uh, NASA, somebody slipped us a backdoor link to a NASA FTP server that had thousands of folders by dates and images. Mm. And we went through all the folders and it showed they had the blue marble blank CGI ball they had weather data for all the clouds and they wrap it around a ball. They add a Terminator line and they, these are the pictures that are coming. Mm. And by mm. the way, those real time pictures come 20 minutes late. So they're always 20 minutes from when they actually happen. So we actually 100% proved that they're faking those, mm-hmm. but the global wow. believers were like, well, you know, I, I don't believe that. I mean, we had, we had full access to it and we have videos showing it. Wow. So if you catch NASA faking one thing, they're faking everything. If you right. catch them on the space station, hanging from wires, using CGI, augmented reality, faking stuff, green screens, using zero G planes, um, they're faking everything. If you catch them once, they're faking everything. What's the most incredible construction project ever done in, in modern times? Would you think it's the space station building that thing in space? Pretty cool, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think those astronauts in their clunky spacesuits with their big snowboarding mittens on built that without any help from the mission control? Mission control probably helped, right? Yeah. All right. How did mission control help? They couldn't see. They can't see that far. How'd they help? Cameras, right? They, yeah. they, everything. They, they were like, okay, you know, <laughs> yeah. John, move that thing to the left and grab the nut over here, you know, connect <laughs> here. Right. So, the, so they must have helped them. It was amazing. Right. Right. There's zero photos, zero video of it being built. <laughs> zero. Mm. None. Well, it's national security. They can't let that go. And then, Wait a minute, we built uh, and then with the don't Russian. they say we, like the news will be like the ISS <clears throat> is going to pass by at this time? Look up. Don't forget to look up. Well, now you will see something go up. You will, and I've seen it. I've uh, you get it on your phone. You get a little um, USS tra- um, a saddle, ISS. I, ISS tracker, and uh, I was waiting for it. It came right on a moment, Whew, right across the sky. It took about eight minutes. It took about eight minutes. Went from. Uh, where did it come from? It came from the Southwest, I think. I forget what direction it came from. So it came, went across in like eight minutes. Well, I saw this thing and it literally looked like a piece of the sun. It was as bright as the sun. And it was because it's reflecting sunlight, they tell us. And and it moving across the sky, like 
how is it reflecting the sun as bright as the sun? Is it made of mirrors? And how is it going to my eye and somebody 100 miles away can see it also? Wouldn't it just be reflecting? Like, if I was taking that light and reflecting it to your eye, you wouldn't even see the reflection right next to him. Mm. So it's not flickering. It's just going across. And then I'm like, wait a minute. It's going 17,500 miles an hour times eight minutes. I could, I, I'm looking at this thing in California now from the East Coast. Like, it would be in California uh-huh. And, and, but I still see it in the sky and it, it's the size of a 747. You look up and see a 740. You ever stand next to a 747? Pretty big plane. Gigantic. It's overwhelming how big it is. People don't realize how big they are until you stand next to one or get on one. Uh-huh. At cruising altitude, it's the size of a, a smaller than a pencil eraser held at arm's length, right? It's tiny. Mm. You could barely see the wings. You can't even see the engines, right? Mm-hmm. That's five miles high. Hmm. The space station's 250 miles high, and it's the same size. So you think um, it's an airplane? So, no, I'm not saying that at all. Not yet, at least. <laughs> um, so it's if a, if 747 was twice the height, you, wouldn't, you couldn't see it. Right. But this thing's 50 times higher, and it's reflecting sunlight at a brightness that's scientifically impossible. And we can see it. It's angular size is still big enough for us to see it. Wrong. None of that works out. It doesn't make sense. None of it. You know why it doesn't make sense? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's because because <laughs> it's stupid. Because it's stupid and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> right? And then and then but here's the thing. I saw I saw I saw the um So what do you think it is then? Oh, I'm gonna tell you in a second and ask me that question in a second. Okay. But I saw the um the the chain of satellites, the Yes, that, we that, saw the Starlink. You, we saw them. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. saw Starlink. that. We've yeah. seen that. And there was the, there was a string of lights going yes. by. So And we're like, what is so, that? So when you look up at a seven forty seven at cruising altitude, can you see the engines? No. no. Not really. No. Okay. And the engines are gigantic, right? You, the the size of a Starlink is about the size of a um a small you know kid's desk. Each Starlink, you could probably fit fifty of them inside of an engine, right? Inside of a you know. So the Starlinks are that tiny, mm-hmm. and they're a hundred times farther away than the seven forty seven is. And you think you could see them? Wait, they weren't far away when we were looking at them. But yes, they that, were. That, that's what he, <laughs> in reality, yeah. what you were looking at was very yeah. close. Yeah. But they're telling us that they're 300 miles in the sky. Oh, I didn't know that. That, Of course, because your common sense tells you that they're close. Yeah. Now, I encourage anybody, if you're out and you see the starling coming, tell everyone to shut up. Don't say anything and listen. And you're going to hear jet fighters in front of them and jet really? fighters behind them securing that area of the sky so no rogue plane or drone or anything can go into that area it's huh. literally following up and now what is it is it a some sort of craft dragging some lights behind it that's one th- theory another one is that it's um it's actually a giant airship hmm. with lights on the bottom and the whole airship is using video cloaking technology where basically it, it's just invisible because it displaces the light. You know, you see those cloaking sheets, a guy holds in front of them and you can see behind them. Mm-hmm. Um, and because we have some video of, of it going by and as you watch it go by, some of the stars that are next to it disappear as it's going by, like something's blocking it. Again, we don't know what it is, but we know what it's not. It's not a school desk 300 miles away that looks as that, that's bro- reflecting <laughs> sunlight. Right. It's not. It's stupid. That means Elon Musk is lying and he's not our savior. Well, I never thought that <laughs> wow. in the first place. <laughs> well, he he did wear what? a nice Halloween costume last year. Did you like it? <laughs> I forgot what it was. It was Baphomet. Oh, he was yeah. literally Baphomet. That's right. Yeah. Chris, do you have a oh yeah. Look at look at your phone because Chris is over there sending you messages and stuff. Okay. My phone's dead. Okay. You, How, uh, um, hold on a second. You were going to ask me another question a minute ago. Oh yeah, I just want to know what you think the ISS that yeah. floats by is. So I had a, uh, a NASA whistleblower contact me on email, and I'm like very skeptical. I'm like, this is probably just a troll. And we we had a very long back and forth discourse on emails over a month. And I was asking all sorts of questions. He gave me all sorts of answers. He goes, I'll answer what I can. He goes, you know, but I'm in the middle of fleeing the country right now. And, mm-hmm. um, or that was like halfway through our discourse. He's like, I don't know how available I'm going to be. I'm leaving the country. Right. It sounded kind of a little sketchy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he said that the ISS is, there's five of them. They're, they're, um, 
modified B-2 bombers that have some transparent parts made out of transparent um, fabric. I'm like, wait, how do you have transparent? He goes, well, there's metal, there's metal bones to it, but they're so thin you can't see them. Hmm. So there's transparent parts, and then it has an array of LED lights that are um, the same color as the sun. And there's five of them. Two of them are based in Austra- in um, in in Alaska. Another one was in I think Russia. I forget where it was. And the other two were so- somewhere else. And they take turns. Now there's times where you're tracking the ISS, and it says, "Well, you're gonna see the ISS here," and then it disappears. Hmm. They turned off the lights. They're going to get fuel, change crew. I don't uh-huh. know what they're doing, hmm. but they just do it and they follow this course. You're like, "Wow, that's a lot of work just to fake the globe." It is. It's a lot of work, but if you're hiding God, it's worth it. If that's your goal, mm-hmm. you know, and, right. and and people will use it and people, but then if people say, well, what about it when it transits the sun? Because they can tell you where you can be to watch when the ISS at nighttime will transit the 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 moon or during the day transit the sun and you can film it. Mm-hmm. And it literally goes by, it goes by. But if you film it when they tell you, you'll actually see it. And um, the thing is, we've done an analysis on the pixels. It, you wouldn't be able to see it. Again, that's another parlor trick. I don't believe that's just a plane going there. I'm not sure what what that is. Mm -hmm. But again, we can falsify it. We can prove that it's not what they say. And uh, falsification is independent of replacement. Okay. You're looking a little uncomfortable, Jack. (laughs) Yeah, man. I'm just, I have so many questions and I'm thinking about this. But I want to go back to my... Wait, wait, we got to go back to this question real quick. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. (laughs) The GPS only works with a globe model. That's literally what it stands for. Global Positioning System. According to people. It's the ground positioning system. It used to be called Loran. When I was a kid, we navigated on our boats using Loran, which is basically towers in a specific positions that would create grids and then it would tell you where you are just with numbers you know it's like okay eight seven five nine two and four six eight two and i find where they intersect and that's exactly where i was i put it on a marine map and there i am and it worked perfectly and then all of a sudden satellites became here and all they did was put a graphic overlay over that wrapped it around a ball and said this is where you are this is the coordinate system let me ask you a question why do we have a two-dimensional coordinate system latitude and longitude x and y why Mm -hmm. isn't there a z-axis when we're on a three-dimensional sphere why are we using a flat coordinate system x and y that's flat Uh. versus x y and z Mm. so so getting back to gps true GPS, um, it's getting better, by the way, um, doesn't work in the middle of unpopulated areas in the middle of the Southern Ocean in between California and Hawaii in the middle of the Amazon. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in the Southern Oceans. Why is that? Because there's no towers there. Now, are they doing other things with GPS? Uh, you know, are there are some of the balloon satellites working with them? Some of the AWACS planes, maybe? Possibly. Do they even have the ability to poke things into the firmament and like, make them float up there? That That also might be another option. Um, but GPS is clearly only using towers. Now people say, well, what about satellite phones? And mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I've figured out, um, how that works. A satellite phone, you know, your cell phone can only reach a tower X number of miles away. Is it five miles? Is it less? Whatever. Even in the middle of nowhere, your phone's not going to work, but a satellite phone works. Well, that's a much powerful, different spectrum. And it could broadcast much farther. But let's say you're in the middle of nowhere on Gilligan's Island. You know, you're nowhere. And your satellite phone works. You know how it works? How? It's connecting to airplanes. Connecting to commercial airplanes huh. that have the power generator, the receiver, the transmitter, the maintenance that they need to every time they land. They, really? And, and so you, if you can't reach a tower, you reach the closest airplane. Uh-huh. That airplane can reach a tower. Right. Or if it can't, it reaches another airplane. It's a mesh network. It does, it's like cell towers. It's going boom, boom, boom. Once you're connected to a tower, you can talk to anyone anywhere in the world because of the undersea cables mm-hmm. that have been here before we got here. And uh, many of them have. And um, that's how the communications work. People just want to believe in a fantasy. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. That's nothing. It's faster than the speed of sound. We're orbiting at 66,600 miles an hour. Funny number. We're chasing the sun oh. at a half a million miles an hour, rounding off. And this and the entire galaxy is moving sideways at uh 2.2 million miles per hour. But somehow we can put a satellite in space 
that will mirror the spinning of the earth and stay over the same part of the earth the whole time while we're corkscrewing through space. Why we're corkscrewing through space. It doesn't make sense. That's, thank you. <laughs> you know why it doesn't make sense? Because it's stupid. Because it's stupid. Because it doesn't make sense. Stupid. This is what we're doing. We're corkscrewing through space in ridiculous speeds. Traveling. And where are we going? We're going nowhere where we, where we were before. We're never to return to the same place. But we always see the same stars we a year later. We always see the same stars. Exactly. Let's talk about that for so a second. So then what is the earth? Is it traveling through space and then just makes a circle and comes back? No, it doesn't come back. It, it, it goes. But they say that the stars are so far away that there's no parallax. Even though we're traveling 4.4 billion miles a year. Decade after decade, century after century, the stars never change. That's cool story, bro. So, and the North Star stays where, where it is. We're like, wait a minute. They say, but the Earth is wobbling. So we're going to, in 2,000 years, we're going to have a different North Star. Well, you say, well, we're looking at the Great Pyramid of, Egypt, uh, the Great, Great Pyramid of Giza. Mm -hmm. There's a shaft that points right to Polaris today. You can go look at it if they let you go, if they let you go look at it. And um, the globalists will say, well, it used to point towards Thuban. That was the North Star 2,000 years ago, whatever the time frame was. Uh -huh. And now it's pointing towards Polaris. I said, so in all of the time that we're wobbling through no North Star, we just happen to live in the time where we're pointing towards another star. That's our North Star. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when we die, it's going to drift away. Well, they say, they say that um, the, the wobbling is one degree every 76 years, right? One degree every 76 years. So do you guys know about the Georgia Guidestones? I do. So the Georgia Guidestones. They destroyed them. Besides having <laughs> the the New World Order, you know, population, everything, the Ten Commandments on there, whatever, what the, that they're wishing for, the center stone had a thin little hole and you look through it and there's Polaris. Mm -hmm. Polaris is there. Right. It was built in 1981. Mm -hmm. Well, if the earth is wobbling, which is what they tell us, um, one degree every 76 years, it was up for over 40 years. That's a half a degree. A half a degree is one and a half moon widths. That star would have been out of that hole. Right. So we started pointing that out and it started going viral. And then a terrorist blew up one of the stones. And within hours, a bulldozer was there and took away all the evidence. Mm -hmm. And no investigation has ever been done. Who's who's we when you say we've been pointing this out? We pointed uh, we, this out. me, me, other flat earthers. We were pointing out, you know, we went there and we looked through and we did a time lapse and we showed that Polaris went pointed was right through that hole. If the earth is wobbling, then that's impossible after 40 years. But it was still there. So they blew it up. And now there's no proof that it ever did that. And people will forget about it just like Building Seven. Mm hmm. Wow. Right. Wow. Okay, uh, I I want to know about antipodes and antipodes. the earthquake, <laughs> you know, all that kind of thing. Like, because I follow Dutch Can Sense I, and he uses the I globe. Think has, I think he has a question. I yep. think he's going to cry. Yeah, you know, okay. I want to hear. I want to hear. <laughs> okay. what you're, I want to hear what you're saying. But I keep going back to the um, Antarctica thing because I wanted to point okay. a, point something out that I know of that I heard about. People, I think, have explored. Uh, Antarctica, right? I think they have gone there. Mr. Beast made a video about it. Or <laughs> he something. went there, and the scientists that were supposed to go there all got COVID, so he couldn't go explore. So he just went to the shoreline, and that's it. So that's what a lot I keep hearing from a lot of people that they they made arrangements to go. <laughs> there was a, like they did everything they were supposed to do, and then they weren't able to actually do it. Um, is there something? Is there like video? Is there something? There's nothing where somebody <laughs> went there. <laughs> no. Um, you just have Admiral Byrd word of what he discovered but then he died after he told everybody what he saw yeah died yeah, he died six months later uh, 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 after he told everybody you know there's more resources more land everything yeah i i remember reading the, um, hearing about that my uh my my wi-fi isn't working so great but that's okay so picture our world pond the shoreline all around the world is antarctica mm -hmm. and there's a whole bunch of bases in different areas mm -hmm. um so some people say they go to Antarctica and then they go back out. They just literally go there and go back out and they say they crossed Antarctica. Nobody goes from Santiago, South America and shows up in Australia. It's never been done. And the people that claim that they went to the South Pole and whatnot, they're all um, 
there, you know, one of the guys was, um, was sued, whatever, for faking accidents on missions. I mean, they're all sketchy past and they have, you know, royal connections. Um, but one we were very excited about a bunch of years ago was a guy, they called it Spider Tracks, and he was going to do the first uh, South North exploration of Antarctica. Where he uh, of the world, he's going to circumnavigate south. We're like, okay, this is good, and we can actually track him online. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we tracked him. He went from up north, you know, Australia. I mean, um, Alaska, and down to America and um, South America, and then he went to some islands, and then he went to the South Pole, and then he turned around because the weather was too bad, and he came back up to Brazil and back up to the north. And we're like, well. Didn't do it because mm. the earth is flat and Guinness book gave him the world record for Southern circumnavigation. He mm. literally went to the end of the street, turned <laughs> around and came back and said, my street's a sphere. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If the earth was a globe, they wouldn't need to straw man us and lie, but that's all they do. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, we don't have time to talk to flat earthers, but he makes video after video after video straw manning us. I think that's what I, I don't like is I see these debates between people. I don't like the attitude. Well, the attitude that, bothers me. Right. Like I, I watched, um, you know, uh, I guess an example is Bryce Mitchell. Yeah. Like I listened to this guy, um, seen his fights, you know, kind of a fan. Uh, but I, I seen him talk about this and he says it as a matter of fact too. Like that's, this is genuinely what he believes. Okay. Yeah. What you believe. And then I watched um, some some video of Joe Rogan, and Joe was he was just like I don't know. He just seemed condescending. He seemed not very nice about it. It, yep. it was almost like you're being laughed at if you think a different way. And I don't I don't know. It's just it's cr insane to me. It's crazy to me. Like the video that you did, you did a you did a um, an interview that I watched, and you did a, did it with some. Uh, Professor Dave. Yeah, yeah so let's, and, let's talk about that. Yeah, I just want to Wait, say one Wait, but before we get out of Antarctica, I got to ask one thing about Antarctica. She, you're going to ask about those maxi pads or something like that? What? What did you say? What was it called? <laughs> what? What was it called? No, anti what? I do want to ask about that, but Chris has this question about Antarctica. All right. So it, Please remind me how, to talk about Professor Dave in a yeah, second. Okay, Don't sure. let me forget. How people in Antarctica can see the sun for 24 hours a day, every day for six months straight. The sun never disappears. How does Flat Earth Model Sun account for that? It doesn't happen. It, that's a belief because it's a globe belief, but no one has ever filmed the sun. Crow's Law of High Definition says anything interesting that can be filmed in high def will be filmed in high def. There's four videos that are clearly fake, not because we're saying they're fake, because they're clearly faked. Uh -huh. um, with fake suns and people didn't believe it. Uh, me without any real good software, I I, I took I want I made one and I showed two suns circling Antarctica. I made it, it was like amazing. I mean, and I actually posted it because it was just a total joke. And people were like, oh my god, there's two suns. I'm like, no, it's fake. It's fake. Whoa. And so I did it without really? eighty million dollars a day. So the people <sighs> living there that say they see the sun no, twenty four hours. No one straight. says they see the sun twenty four hours. Now they can see daylight. Daylight and sunlight are two different things. What I mean is this: um, before the sun rises, you can see. Right. When the sun rises on the east side of your house, you can see the sun. But on the west side of your house, you can still read the newspaper. Not that you ever should. Right. Um, so what's that's daylight. Uh -huh. So the sky is lit. So when the sun moves out to the Tropic of Capricorn, out to the Tropic of Capricorn, the light gets closer to the dome and it wraps around. And we can we can take a dome, and I have if on the app if you go to the to the Antarctica and twenty four hour sun section, we can take a little dome, and I can bring a light back and forth, and you'll see a lit area and a dark area. And when I bring it out, the light will wrap all the way around. Now you can't see the sun, but you can have daylight too. Mm -hmm. But um, we talked that we we've actually in December and January there's all of these bases, and they have webcams. Now they'll never show us. A webcam for 24 hours. We're like, we're trying to watch the 24 hour sun and the, we'll watch a shadow goes around and then it jumps around and it jumps. And like, wait a minute, why are they cutting it? And so we actually, Jaron from Jaronism channel actually contacted them and they're like, well, we don't have enough bandwidth. You know, we only have a certain amount of bandwidth. And he's like, okay, well, instead of doing it every day, how about just give us one day? 
Give us right. 24 hours one day. Yeah. Oh, no, we can't do that because, you know, they just make up excuses. Mm. Excuse after wow. excuse after excuse. And so the, the whole 24-hour sun in Antarctica, the reason people say it's real is because it has to be real if we live on a globe, but it's not. It's not real. And there's a there's another thing we can talk about there is um the... And this, the, uh, I'm trying to explain it in the most easy way. Here in the north... And I'm farther north than you guys. In June, when the sun sets, it's still light for almost two hours, right? Right. In the summer, it's light for two hours. If we're on a globe, whatever my northern latitude is in June, the equal southern latitude in December should have the same amount of twilight after the sun sets. On a globe, because there has to be sym symmetry, Right. So it'd have to be the same. So they would be getting longer stretches of twilight and we're getting shorter. Like when the sun sets for me now in Connecticut, 10 minutes later, it's dark. Right. 20 minutes. It's per pitch dark. Right. Right. And, and that's because the sun is farther away from it. But if you look at the flat earth map, the Tropic of Can Cap Cancer is the middle circle. The equator is bigger than that circle. And the Tropic of Capricorn is bigger than that circle. Right. Do you, mm -hmm. you understand how that looks? Yeah, yeah. 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 So when the sun is out over the Tropic of Capricorn, it has to go faster because that's a bigger circle to make it around in 24 hours. Uh -huh. So that you know, people are like, well, how does the sun go faster? Well, how does the tip of an hour hand go faster than the middle of the hour hand on the watch? Well, it's moving. It's just going faster. So what can we do to test? Well, we've been having people all over the world measure now, backing up, every latitude everywhere has their own amount of daylight and sunset times. It's different for everyone everywhere. That's fine. But what we're measuring is after the sun completely disappears, how long is it light? It should be getting shorter for people in the north and longer for people in the south. But since the equinox, we've been measuring, even though since the, the summer solstice, and it's getting shorter for everybody everywhere even in the South, the sun is moving faster. So when it sets, it's light is being taken away faster. Mm -hmm. So whether you have 10 minutes, 20 minutes or an hour and whatever date the next day and the next day and the next day will be less. It'll be nine minutes and 19 minutes and you know, 58 minutes or whatever. It's getting less and less and less. And when you actually think this through, it's impossible on a globe, impossible impossible ball i don't Phil's, know Phil I, said, who, who says there's oh good i was just going to repeat in case people didn't hear who's watching uh phil said say what say the question again oh what does the edge of the yeah. world look like so if you google flat earth in space you're going to find a pancake floating in space with water falling off the edge that's a psyop that's uh from the flat earth society <laughs> <That's fake. laughs> we're not interested in that it's a it's a bunch of nonsense we're a pond okay now is God's creation, we're just sealed off and Antarctica uh, has, you know, these giant mountains that surround us and we're just literally in this dome? Possible. I think there's more lands uh -huh. um, within God's creation. Well, I think the earth is bigger than, they're, than they've told us. They've, mm. they've imprisoned us here. So there's no edge to a disc. You can't look over the flat earth. Where the, the way I describe it is where the foundation, the base basement of the universe. Um, if you know what a toroidal field is, if you look at these, um, I forget the exact name, uh, a toroidal, um, what is it? The, the toroidal field. It basically, we live inside this toroidal field and here it is. And, uh, my, uh, my iPad died. So okay. this is a toroidal field and we live on this dielectric plane in the middle of the field. Show them. Yeah. So that's where we live, and that's where only the only place we can live. You know, when I was a kid, they were doing um, high altitude test flights, and these pilots were coming back and going, I could see through my eyelids, I lost consciousness. I, I think when you're separated from this electrical system that we're in, we're electrical beings, right? Um, that things don't work out so well. You know, they, you, your body starts dysfunctioning. So I don't think anybody can leave the, the plane. So Believing in outer space and aliens coming from distant, you know, suns and worlds flying through this infinitely impossible space vacuum versus more land just a couple thousand miles away or within our southern oceans, mm -hmm. right? Makes more sense. It make, It's physically possible.
But again, we want the right to explore. This is our world, not theirs. Mm -hmm. God, man, then maybe government. Mm -hmm. Get rid of government. Exactly. Right? <laughs> government wants to be above God. Mm -hmm. They've already put themselves above us. Right. And they're telling you what to do. They're taking your money. They're doing everything because you're playing in their rule book. You have mm -hmm. to you play. If you're playing on their board, you got to play by their rules. I right. don't play on their board anymore. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> exactly. Here's the thing. Do not believe that the earth is flat. You need to know it. You need to test it. You need to verify it. And the first thing you want to do is prove the globe. And when you try to do that, you can prove that the globe doesn't exist. Then we have something to talk about. Then we can go verify. And the whole the whole why is um, it gets more in depth than what I was just saying. But the why is the best question. It is the way they control us. Mm -hmm. If you're in significant spec, you know, in a possibly God distant God or godless um, Big Bang universe, you've given away your divinity, you've given away your power. Mm -hmm. They don't want us to know that we're a collective mind. Uh, they want to keep the population down and scared and fear because once our minds come together, um, we become more powerful and too powerful for them. We don't need to take down the government. We need to ignore the government and create our own, create our own world, mm -hmm. play on our own board, play I with like that. I would, I would go along with that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and That's so you great. asked earlier, and I, I never answered the question, uh, when the whole world wakes up, finds out NASA is faking, oh, it, yeah. what are we going to do? What's going to happen because yeah. it's happening fast? Yeah. So the answer is um, they killed our president with, uh, you know, they killed uh, Kennedy and they disclosed that the CIA did it. Right. right. You, you guys saw that. Yes. Nobody cares. Exactly. Nobody cares. Right. Flat Earth is getting out. Maybe I'm part of it. I'm normalizing it. So eventually when it comes out, people are like. Yeah, I knew it was flat the whole time. You know? Right. Yeah, you know, and then it's not going to be a big they're deal. Gonna, they're going to, but, but by then you're going to be living in your 15 minute city. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your electric car that will drive you to the police station when you don't cooperate. Exactly. They're, they're going to be turning on your digital, <laughs> uh, digital off your currency. Money. Yeah. They're, they're, you're going to own Jeez. nothing and be happy and, and, right? and, and all of this stuff. You're going to be eating Z bugs Ugh. and, uh, and the printed meat. And, and, you know, <laughs> this is, this Sounds is terrible. And, and so at that point, when you find out the earth is flat, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Now is the time to wake up. There are big podcasters that have that are that are afraid to come out. They've been talking and they're coming out slowly. I don't know if you know who Stu Peters is, Peggy Hall, mm -hmm. um, all the entire health freedom doctors. Right. They all yeah, know yeah, yeah. the earth is flat. Right. All of them. Huh. Right. I'm speaking at Anarchapoco this year uh, mm -hmm. in Anarchapoco at really? the biggest freedom conference. It's the 10th year. Uh -huh. And uh, so far, I've identified out of all the speakers, there's seven speakers that are full flat earthers. Oh, OK, wow. so we're, okay. we're taking over. Uh -huh. um, and the thing is, when you discover that your place in the universe is not random and haphazard and nothing, you literally... I've never been happier and the world has never been as crazy as it is. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm so yeah. thrilled to be alive at this time. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got to talk about the antipodes. Yeah, we can talk about the <laughs> antipodes. I, I just, uh, I want to make sure you knew how much I hated professor Dave. I could not stand watching that video. I yeah. didn't like it because yeah. I always hate it when people are condescending and treat you like an idiot. I don't no. care what, position you yeah. hold whenever somebody does that it loses all credibility yeah. to me and what they yeah. got what they got out of that they're, they're, the big meme that they're like using is dave weiss says that uh um spectroscopy needs to be in a container well spectroscopy is the uh, measuring uh you know figuring out what gases are hundreds of trillions of light years away you're like like what mm -hmm. it, no one's ever demonstrated tr to spe spectroscopy we have a challenge get a garbage can filled with whatever gas and put it at the end of the block and get somebody with a spectroscopy instrument and we'll open up the top and you tell us what gas comes out of there i don't think it could be done mm -hmm. i think it's all mm -hmm. a bunch of pseudoscience mm -hmm. um but what i was actually saying in there just to finish that point is gas needs a container so you need a container to do spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot through space to find gas in a space vacuum. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. Right. <laughs> but I, with I the firmament's so, so a container, professor though. Dave. Yeah, so right? real quick. Professor yeah. Dave isn't a professor. He He's a failed musician. <laughs> and he's not a professor. <laughs> and um, he found his fame by uh, by by strawmanning uh, the top 10 reasons that flat earthers are wrong and he's wrong and every single one of them has been debunked. But that that video, Google will serve it to you when you search for anything flat earth. It'll mm -hmm. come right up. If you're looking for it, it's right there. 
And I was, uh, it was supposed to be highly moderated and we're supposed to have our turns to talk uninterrupted and that within 30 happen. seconds, it didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. But there's a great video and it's on the app under the debunking the debunkers um, where a guy that doesn't take either side, he um, just analyzes debates for logical fallacies and, and uh, you know, ad homs. Mm. And it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. He, the, Professor Dave w broke the world record. Really? And, uh, <laughs> and he goes over it. And when you watch it, you know, because a lot of people are, are very lazy in the way they analyze things and they'll be like, Oh, well, his name is professor and he's talking down to this stupid flat earther. And they literally just buy into that. It's a, again, right. he, again, he's a wizard. He's using wizard tricks. Um, but he even admitted in a video, he's, well, you know, I was on a thing on uh, YouTube and I thought professor sounded pretty cool. So I call myself professor Dave. That's literally why he's a professor. Cause he, so one of my YouTube channels, my, my name is uh, professor flat earth Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. Antipods. Go ahead. What, no what antipodes. Antipodes. <laughs> what are we talking about with antipodes? Okay. So I'll need my globe again. What? I'll That's need my her globe. globe. Again. <laughs> Okay. All right. So here we have the globe. <laughs> and I follow um, an earthquake guy named Dutch Sense. And he oh, created yes. this model and it's on the globe, right? And it's where earthquakes, if they pop up on Brazil, well, the antipode is somewhere over here, right? Yeah. So, and they follow all the way around through his arrows and stuff on a globe. How do you do that on the flat? And how do you have an antipode on flat? So uh, the the earthquake happens on one side of the globe, and then it go and, and it goes all the way around to the other side. Is right, that what you're and it saying? follows so, his arrows all yes. the way around, and it'll be when an earthquake the same size earthquake hits a continent, on the other side. It actually wraps around the continent and continues on the other side, mm -hmm. everywhere on Earth except Antarctica. Uh huh. Okay. It literally goes to. I don't think I can get back on my my iPad. Um, um, it, so there was a, here, we got it right here. Okay. Um, there was an earthquake and it went, I think it down this way. It went, it wrapped around Australia and then it hit here and it just, it just kept wrapping this way. It didn't show up over here. If okay. the earth was a globe, it was just going around Antarctica and showed up over here, uh -huh. but it never did. It just, it acted like Antarctica was the shoreline of our world. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so it, it didn't antipode. Right. It will go. But most of his, well, when if, he it, shows it, you, it's you, showing you that they are antipoding. Well, if you have an earthquake here, uh -huh. it's, it's, it'll go out and you'll see it all over here. So that's what he's calling antipode. But the when it goes outwards, south, 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 it stops. It hits the ice wall, the shoreline, not the ice wall like the Game of Thrones. Uh -huh. It hits the shoreline of Antarctica. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, but he's drawn the arrows based on a globe and they're following. The globe those is just a projection of the flat done. earth. They tell us that okay. the, the flat earth is a globe stretched out, but it's the other way around. The flat earth, the globe is the flat earth wrapped around a, a sphere. Gotcha. And so you can use the same coordinates except the Z. Uh huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Are you good? With that point, I don't <laughs> yeah, want to. Do you, I don't want to hurry do you. Guys, I don't want to rush you. Do you guys have anything? No, but I'm asking. It, no, yeah, any, well, that I might have missed or or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No well, okay, problem. So, but I mean, right, on the, so then, on this topic. okay. On well, there's one more thing. Then on the okay. topic of the antipodes, there is um, the site that I read that said Auckland and Madrid are a close antipodal pair or the opposite points on earth. We can fly from Auckland in any direction and arrive at Madrid after we, traveling a similar distance, regardless of the direction we leave Auckland. And then they show like, these are actual Google flights in October, 2019, Auckland to Santiago to Madrid, 23.63 hours, Auckland, Buenos Aires, Madrid, 23.33 hours. Auckland, LA, Madrid, 23.33. Auckland, Tokyo, Madrid, 25.17. Auckland, Shenzhen, Madrid, 25.7. Okay. And one more, Auckland, Perth, Doha, Madrid, uh, 26.5. 
And so basically on a flat earth, they're saying that wouldn't work because it, the times should be longer, not the same yeah. or shorter. So, oh, yeah, that's interesting. So do you believe that airplanes haven't gotten any faster since the 1960s? I haven't thought about that. <laughs> okay. Do you believe that airplanes could go at different speeds? Yes. Okay. Do you know that there's wind currents in the uh, uh, 40,000 feet that are going two, 300 miles an hour? Right. In perfect I know. circles. Yes, In I perfect know. circles around the flat earth center. Okay. So, you know, to say that um, I'm going to drive from Connecticut to, to California on my Maserati. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother's going to take her Datsun from 1970, and she's only going to Salt Lake City. But I got there first. Uh huh. Is it shorter to California, or is it <laughs> Salt Lake City shorter? Well, I need to look at the map. Well, it's short. It's halfway <laughs> the, across the United the, States versus all the way right. across the United yeah. States. But I beat right. her. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm going yeah. faster. Yeah, I'm right. I'm going right. faster. Right. Yeah. So, well, I mean, jet stream also takes into account, of yeah. course. Right. And so we've we've looked at all of these flights. Okay. And um and some of them, the plane, because we're looking at the wind currents, and the plane would have to ignore the wind currents and mean that it's only flying at 300 miles an hour, which planes don't fly at 300 miles an hour; they go 500 plus. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of the all of these times make perfect sense. Um, from Santiago to Australia, I think it's 14 hours. Mm -hmm. We proved that the flight exists. We had uh, Max Egan, who was not a flat earther. And I wouldn't call him a flat earther now, but I'd call him a, it ain't a ball guy. Um, <laughs> and uh, he uh, he was proving that the flight existed because there was many flat earthers back in 2015 or 16 when that was that said the flight didn't exist. So we live streamed him getting on the plane and we live streamed tracking the plane for 14 hours mm -hmm. and we live streamed him logging back into the live stream when he landed to prove that there was no funny business. Okay. But he took compass readings the whole way and um, his compass going from uh, New Zealand or, or Australia to um, Santiago should have been south and then southwest and then a little bit northwest and he should have gotten there but the compass is the compass reading wasn't that his compass reading was north northwest then west and then southwest and then south and so we plotted that on a flat earth and it was a straight line right across the flat earth map from one to the other so his compass okay. readings uh -huh. matched reality of a flat earth versus the speculated ball which makes no which makes no sense. His compass readings def were weren't lying. His compass readings showed reality. So there's there's so many um, routes in the south that make no sense. Where they go all the way up from Australia to like Amsterdam, and then all the way back down to South America. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a flight from um, the World Cup. And now a lot of people say, well, they, they have to change airplanes and change pilots and it's their hub and everything. Well, mm -hmm. after the World Cup, the the the, Buena, the team from Buenos Aires that won, they were in Doha and they flew to Rome to get more gas. And then they flew from Rome to Buenos Aires. And if you look at that on a globe, Rome is farther or the same from Buenos Aires. Why did they go out of their way to get more gas and then fly over? But you look at a flat earth map, it's a straight line from Doha to Rome to Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. So this happens all the time. But the, the real thing is when you look at emergency landings, because something, a woman's having a baby, someone's having a heart attack and they need to land immediately. And you'll watch the plane will land a thousand, 1500 miles off of its flight path on the globe. And they'll get there in 15 minutes. Wait a minute. 500 miles an hour. How'd they get there in 15 minutes? Uh -huh. Right? And they'll land. But then if you chart a line on a flat earth map from the origin to the destination, the stop where they landed is right on that line every time. Every time. There's dozens of them. There's a book called 16 Emergency Landings That Proof Flat Earth where it's all documented for you. Uh -huh. Make it easy for you to research it. Nice. Um, and it, it happens all the time. The, my favorite one was... A flight from Hong Kong, Hong Kong, was it Hong Kong? Hong Kong to, to the UK and a family was traveling together, husband, wife, small children. And uh, four hours into this 12 hour flight, the mom died suddenly, mm. dead, nothing they could do. What do you got to do? You got to land right away. 
Right. They flew for eight more hours sitting with their dead mother. Can you, you can't even imagine it. It brings no. tears to your eyes. You can't even imagine it. And like, why didn't they land? Why didn't they land? And they finally landed. Um, where they land? They landed right. They didn't make it to their final destination, which was like another hour farther. And for some reason, they stopped. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it on a flat Earth map, that entire time they didn't stop is because they were flying over Russia. If you draw uh, a straight line on a flat Earth map, and right. if they landed in Russia, Russia would probably be very helpful, and that could spark world peace. Yep. And huh. other people would be like, "Wait a minute, why did you? Why were you flying over Russia?" And then somebody would point out, "Well, because the Earth is flat. They can't have that." Wow. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's. I'm gonna have to give you the the, the images on that okay. because my iPad died. Phil's got a question over there. Yes, sir, Phil. The equator is the line halfway between the center and between the outer area. The equator is where the sun circles over in September and in in um, in September and in March. That's the equinox, and then in June the sun will go all the way to um, the Tropic of Cancer, which is the inner circle. And here we go. I can show you this. So. The red line is the equator in the center. And right now the sun is out over the Tropic of Capricorn. Let's slow it down. And so the sun moves in and out. Now, everything in between the two tropics, guess see? what that area is called? Everything between the tropics, what would that area be called? The tropics. The tropics. Yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> right? And why is it warm in the tropics? Because the sun's closer because to the it. the sun's closer. And if you were living on the equator, how many mm. times a year does the sun travel directly over you, pass over you? Because it goes in six months and out six months. Oh, wow. okay. So how many times does it cross over you in a year? Two. Twice. How far does it get away from you? Not very far at all. But if you lived inside of the Tropic of, Capric uh, Capric Tropic of Cancer, how many times does the sun pass over you? Twice. Zero. Zero. It comes towards you, gets close in uh -huh. June, then it turns around and goes back. Mm. So in Canada, it's not that warm for very long. Alaska, it's cold. Right. Connecticut gets pretty warm, gets pretty cold. Miami gets very hot. Sun goes right over Miami. Yeah. Right? And then it moves back out. Right? And out here, the Tropic of Capricorn, in December, the sun is close out there. It's far from us mm -hmm. and it's cold just because the sun is farther away. So let's call everything in between the tropics, the tropics. Let's call everything inside of the Tropic of Cancer. We'll call that the Arctic region because it's near the Arctic. And everything outside of the Tropic of Capricorn, we'll call that the Antarctic region. Good? Mm -hmm. So if you're in here, anywhere inside that circle, what is the sun doing? What is it doing? It's Moving. arcing around you. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? It's mm -hmm. arcing around you. And the sky is a perfect clock. So I might call it the Arctic. Mm. The Arctic. Right. Now, wow. if I'm out here, is the sun arcing around me? No. It's coming towards me and it's going away. It's Antarcting. Mm. The Antarctic. So think about this. What is the finest timepiece that we know of? What is the thing that keeps the most accurate time? Is it a Swiss watch? What is it? Is it the atomic clock? Hmm. Do you know? What? The sun. I would say the, the sun. The sky clock is the most yeah. accurate clock because yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, all yeah. clocks it's are set to. It's been here forever. Right. And the it's, stars. Yeah. yeah. It's reliable. The moon. Right. Reliable. So the, the sun keeps track of the, the hours and the days. The right. moon keeps track of the weeks and the months. There used mm -hmm. to be 13 mm -hmm. months of 28 days plus one day to reset. And that's 365. And the stars will lap the sun once a year. Mm. So they keep track of the seasons and the years. And the sun will drift back through each zodiac and then reset every year. Every year. So we're in this gravitational beehive universe where the greatest supercomputers on earth can't even resolve a three body problem. We have three gravitational objects and they can't predict what it's going to do next because this one pulls on that one and then it pulls on that one. You know, we're in this gravitational beehive and somehow everything just works perfectly. That's, that's <laughs> you know what, you know, why you can't figure it out. 
stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard to get all a lot of the information that people are going to want to get to yeah. learn some of this stuff. Um, and I know, I know you did. Uh, you got your the app flatearthdave.com is where you go to Flat, get it. Correct? Flatearthdave.com. Okay, you can so, find everything. So and then you've got a videos, not just that you've put out, but that other people have done that you've like right. endorsed and said these are good videos. You put them, put them on there, right? Yep. Um, so people can learn about the stuff that way. Books. I'm I'm more. Go ahead. There's books. There's, there's a homeschool yeah. section. There's okay. There's uh, endless stuff. Okay. I'm more of a. Uh, I know it sounds like I'm closing, but I'm not. I, I'm more of a. Um, I'm a very biblical guy. I'm. I care very very deeply about what the Bible says about things. That's where I'm at. I, I don't care nearly as much about science. And I and perfect. Like I, I feel like. Once you once you have a relationship with God, once you've you've made that choice, that decision, you have to. Part of your walk is I believe that this book is the inspired word of God, and that's what we have. That's what God gave us to live to have as this blueprint for living life. Um, so I care deeply about that, and, and I I started to look at this. I also understand, like Chris and I were talking about this the other day. Like there's there's language you know, in problems and stuff like that with English and Arabic and, you know, like Hebrew and all that. But what I, what I think about it is everything that I've seen, I admit, make, makes this kind of make sense to me. I think about, um, you know, I was talking to some guy yesterday and he referred to the snow globe. And he went, if you think about it, really the snow globe, how it's designed not the globe globe, but the snow globe. The snow globe is actually a half a globe in a way, because even though it might be round, you've got a base and you've got the pillars that the Bible says, yep. how God kind of formed the or created the earth, the pillars, the foundation. They're, they're, the pillars you are can, set into the deep and the deep becomes so dense. It's like these oil rigs that have these posts that don't go all the way to the bottom. They're just set in the deep. Yeah. And it's yeah. like the earth is set in the waters of the deep. Yeah. And the firmament. Yeah. How far the firmament's the dome. Right, the dome, right? How do you how far away do you think the moon actually is? <laughs> so if you nobody if, knows because you can't touch it again. I know you but, think so, something. So I'm gonna tell you what I think. Uh -huh. I'm gonna tell you what I think, but before I do, uh -huh. you know, when we speculate about what's beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, uh -huh. you don't need to go beyond the shoreline of Antarctica or above higher than we could reach or to tell you what the things are in the sky to prove the earth is flat. We can prove that right here. We can see too far. We can see mountain tops that should be 40 miles, mountains that should be 40 miles below the curve. We can see them. We can see the surface of the water where there should be over 50 feet of curvature. We can see the surface of the water for miles and miles and miles beyond that. We can see on a frozen lake, we can see lights set up at different di differences and they all line up on the same level. And that they should be 40 feet, 30 feet, 15 feet, eight feet below a curve, but they oh. all magically line up right at eye level somehow magically. Mm -hmm. um, and they should all be hidden. So we can do mirror flashes and see things. There's a million proofs. But how far is the moon? Well, go out on a on a full moon or close to full moon, bright night, where there's some cumulus clouds in the sky, some small clouds, and notice that the moon only lights up the clouds that are right near it. How do you do that? Hmm. Right? How do you do that? Throw cotton balls all over your floor and get a, a flashlight and hold it, you know, uh, to the ceiling. It's gonna light them all up. How do you mm. only light up some of them? You got to mm. bring Get it close. Closer. You got to bring it close. That's interesting. I don't think the moon that we see is a physical object. I think we see a, for lack of a better word, a projection from within the firmament. I believe that the source of the sun and the source of the moon is in the firmament. Just like God said, he placed the sun and the moon in the firmament. Mm. And I say we're under the firmament. Right. So here's a question. When you put your milk in a refrigerator, you put it under the refrigerator or in the refrigerator? Well, you put it in. Okay. So of the firmament, it depends. the sun, it depends on what's going on. <laughs> 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 so um, I believe that it it's literally being projected into our own personal atmospheric dome or as a muffled grid of vision. Again, go to the, on the app, go to the homeschooling section and go to the schooling globers to learn more about this stuff in depth. We could be here for a month and barely right. cover, you know, what you want to cover. Right. Why can well, you the look moon, through it? I think it's a luminary because that's what God said. The I know, sun and the moon I are know. luminaries. And he also in Genesis says that he gave us dominion over the land, the sea, 
the animals and things, but he did not give us dominion over the sun or the moon. Therefore, yeah. we cannot have, we could not go to the moon and have dominion on it. He did not Are give us that. Are you saying right here <laughs> on this show that we did not go to the moon? Of course we didn't go to the moon. All right. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let me, when you look through a telescope, a really, really great telescope, it, it looks at the moon, it looks like, it's what, some what? object. I mean, it looks like you're seeing Except rocks. Look, you're you're look seeing at, some. Look at the what they call the craters. When you have a black sky or a blue sky or a gray sky and the moon is out during the day, those craters will be the same color as the background, kind of like you're almost seeing through it. There's been a shot where we where there's a crescent moon and you can see a star in the area of the moon that should be the moon, but we can see a star inside that crescent. If you look at many flags of the world, it's a crescent moon with a star in a point where you shouldn't be able to see it. Really? Yeah. Now, does that mean the moon is transparent? Does it? Trick question. I, I can't. I don't, I don't I have It no could idea. mean that the star is in front of the moon. Oh, okay. Could. Right. Sure. It could. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But um, if you ask me where the moon is, I, I think uh, the moon that we see is just miles away. Wait a minute. Wow, the moon just is just a... above the clouds. You know, if we look at the crepuscular rays and we draw those triangles, that's going to put it right above the clouds. My plane flies higher than that. Well, when you fly up, it moves with you. Like when you're driving down the road as a kid and go, Mom, the moon is following us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, No, yeah. it's not. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh -huh. It is following you because you're seeing a projection of it inside our reality. When we send balloons up to 120,000 feet, the sun is never over the balloon. It's always almost at the same level as the balloon. Wow. Kind of like it's the same height. And huh. personally, huh. I don't think we see the sun from that. When the sun's, you know, we have a balloon up. Let's say we have a balloon up at noon and it's out and it's out 120,000 feet. It's 20 miles. I look at that sun and then I look down at the earth and I'm like, I don't think they see the sun that far away. That distance seems too far. So if you ask me, I think it's less than 20 miles, but that's me. Okay, the, but the, if, the moon or the sun? Both. So if it's okay. that yeah. close okay. to you, why can't you get that close to it? Like a rainbow. You can't get to gotcha. it. Gotcha. Right. That makes sense. Now, here's the thing. I don't know, and I could totally be proven wrong on this. And I see the smirk on your face. <laughs> but but if you look at the light from the moon. How is the light in the clouds? How is the moon casting my shadow onto the ground? How can I read by moonlight when it's a dusty, dirty ball a quarter of a million miles away reflecting sunlight? If it's a dusty, dirty ball reflecting sunlight, that light would have to be so bright to reach us. <laughs> if it was one lumen, <laughs> right. if it was only one lumen when I'm looking at it, uh -huh. one lumen, a measure of light. Yeah. If I go halfway to the moon, the inverse square law of light, which you were never taught about, says that it has to be four lumens. It quadruples every time you have the distance. Mm -hmm. Did I lose you already? No. Okay. So if I go halfway again, it's 16 times as bright. Uh -huh. Halfway again, it's 64 times as bright. And if I keep going until I'm 100 miles from the moon, uh -huh. It would be 60 times brighter than the sun. That's how bright it would need to be. You can't fathom what twice the brightness of the sun is because no one's ever seen anything that bright. But it would have right. to be that bright for us to see that the brightness that we see it. But it doesn't <sighs> reflect the sun. God That's said what, he that, gave it its I'm own light. I'm talking globe model. Okay, You're fighting gotcha. for the flat earth here. And, and, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let, let's talk about stars for a second because yeah. this, this will relate to that. Oh, that, this is fascinating. I wanted to talk about the stars. Go ahead. So... The closest star, you know, they tell us stars are like suns and the stars are bigger than our sun. But, you know, look up. You can see the stars are small and they're not like our sun and they're they're smaller. Um, the closest star to the Earth is four and a half light years away. So light travels for four and a half years. That's 25 trillion miles. Do you know how long a trillion is? We, we went over this. Yeah. We so do. 25 trillion miles. So if you and I were in a spaceship traveling a mile per second, no one's ever gone that fast. In one trillion seconds, we've gone for 31,000 years, and we're one twenty-fifth of the way to the closest star. <laughs> we got to do that 24 more times. My dad jokes are going to get really oh, old. Oh, no. <laughs> They're going to get really old on that trip. So, wait, I got a faster ship. 
Elon hooking me up. I got a, a ship that goes 100,000 miles an hour. Can't even fathom that. Guess what? We cut our trip time down to 28,000 years. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Flying through an infinite space vacuum. Yeah. Then we get there and we find out there's a bunch of dead dud planets. There's no life on those planets. We now got to go to another star, which is m way farther than that distance was. So we're going to just... We're going to, it's going to be really bad. And by the way, our space toilet is malfunctioning. So we're in trouble. Okay. <laughs> so, so again, the distances to these stars. So the size and brightness, because as light travels away, it, every time you double the distance to a light, it's a quarter of the brightness. So how can we use that to uh, prove anything? Because we can't change the distance to anything. They tell us Polaris, our North Star, which is pretty bright, is, um, God, I haven't said this in a while. How long is it? 300, uh, 433 light years away, 433 light years away. Remember our closest star was only 25. No, mm -hmm. it was only 4.5 light years away. Right. And that the distance is ridiculous. 433 light years away. They also tell us that it's 46 times bright, 46 times bigger than, than our sun. Okay, now we can do something with that. NASA tells us that Polaris is 46 times bigger than our sun. So if I took our sun and I put it just a, a globe sun and it was just a mile over your head, you went out one day and the sun is just a mile over your head. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a yoga ball and you're a BB a quarter of a millimeter below it, right? Yeah. So you look up the entire sky, horizon, horizon is sun. Then I move it 93 million miles away. Now it's the size of a coin held at arm's length, right? Yeah. It reduced yeah. in size that much. Okay. If I doubled the distance, how much smaller would it be? Well, what I just told you, it would be one quarter of that size. So mm -hmm. now it would be the size of a pencil eraser. If I doubled it again, so it's four times farther, mm -hmm. it would be pretty darn small. Yeah, if I tiny. doubled it again, it's a pinhead. It's a star at that point. Mm -hmm. That's eight times farther. Well, they tell us the sun is eight light minutes away. Eight times eight is 64. We'll call it a light hour. Okay. At a light hour array away, our sun is literally the size of a star. Forgetting the brightness issue. It's the size mm -hmm. of a star. Mm -hmm. If I made it two light hours away, could you see it? You can prove that its angular size would be too small, but let's be safe. Let's make it 48 light hours away. Okay. Ridiculous. We're way beyond any possibility of being able to see it angular size, yeah. let alone its no. brightness. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So no. no. If we took Polaris, which is forty-eight times bigger away. So, so wait, I back it up. I actually made a little mistake there. If we took our sun and it was at a light hour away, we can't see it. Two light hours away. Let's make it a light day. So it's twenty-four times farther. Can't see it. One light day away, you couldn't see it. Right. So we made Polaris. 48 light days away, it would be the same size. Unseeable mm. at 48 light days away. How far is Polaris? 433 light years away. And at wow. two light months away, we couldn't see it. 433 light years <laughs> so away. So much of it doesn't make sense. So why? It, none why? of it makes sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so... It's crazy. Some of it seems so obvious. Some of it seems so in your face, like it's right there, but people are still afraid to question it. Yeah. Wait, Chris? Man. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Chris, w what about this? That's using a GoPro. Uh-huh. Yeah, the firmament. So my NASA whistleblower said, um, I said, uh, there's a go fast rocket. You guys could probably splice that in there, make a note, um, where it was, uh, uh, in Arizona, they shot a rocket straight up, not like a parabolic trajectory at all. The NASA yeah, and straight. SpaceX rockets, it went straight up and they gave us an uninterrupted feed looking down looking sideways. The rocket was spinning, but it was uninterrupted. NASA, watch, or SpaceX, watch any launch. There's six or seven cuts within the first 10 seconds. Because <clears throat> it's a movie. It's all fake rate. So mm -hmm. this thing went up, and after it's 72 miles, it went kerplunk into something thicker. Mm -hmm. like, a, like, a, like a thicker, 
layer, like a plasma layer. And it made this plunking noise. And um, that was interesting. And it floated. But um, one of the things it did is it rolled on its side. And all of a sudden, you can see in the black sky, you can see the moon. Okay. What can we do with that? Mm -hmm. Well, this was shot at 11 a.m. in Arizona. And at that time, the moon was over Australia. So if we took mm -hmm. your globe right here mm -hmm. uh -huh. and we put Arizona at the top, that rocket was a millimeter over Arizona. And the glow and, and uh, below the globe was the moon. How did it see the moon? The earth is flat. That's why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you hear that, Chris? Yeah. He missed it. He had to handle some something outside real quick, but he was talking about the rocket okay. exploded and it hit back. stuff. It, it didn't it, explode. It went up and it, it stuck. It, it was it was floating, but then it could mm -hmm. see the moon. And so, if the Earth was a basketball, and Arizona was on top of that basketball, it's a, literally a millimeter above the basketball, and below the basketball is the moon. Mm -hmm. It saw the moon. It mm -hmm. saw the right. moon. Can't happen. No, it doesn't. That doesn't. Unless Here's it's another flat. thing: if the yeah. light is hitting, if you have a single source light, the sun, and a round planet. No matter how you spin it or tilt it, only half of the planet and always half of the planet will be in light and the other half will be in dark. Mm -hmm. Always. No matter how you spin it. Right. Do the experiment yourself. But on July 8th, every year, 70% of the world is in daylight. Why? Because the earth is flat. <laughs> Wow. Well, on your because how, where's because the sun the, at that point? Uh, in uh, in July, it's oh, it's in uh, it's closer to the middle. July eighth, June, July. It's just in. It's just coming back south from the Tropic of Can of Capricorn, a uh, Cancer, and it lights up the biggest area, which is more than fifty percent of the globe, mm -hmm. seventy percent to be exact. Hmm. Seventy percent. That can't happen on a globe. But it happens every year. And, uh, you know, the, the weather channels and the news, they make a big deal of it. They go, 99% of the world's population is in sunlight at the same time. Well, that's not 99% of the world because everyone lives. The only areas that's in the, in the dark is Australia and New Zealand and um, maybe another part of somewhere else. But um, oh. everything else is in some form of daylight. Hmm. Hmm. Impossible. And the wow. news has talked about that all the time, every year. We are um, talking about um, we're, we're talking about this on. I, I want to make sure everybody watching this, listening to this, knows that we're filming this on December first. Uh, yes. Tomorrow, I want to mm -hmm. say that very clearly that we're filming this on December first. I don't know when you're watching this, but let's make some predictions because tomorrow's yes. a really important <laughs> day. We may as well talk about that because this is going to be fun. Oh, and by the way, on the app, uh -huh. on the more resources section, uh -huh. I have two links to biblical flat Earth, uh -huh. and there's uh -huh. tons of videos oh, really? there. And okay. if you're a Bible believer, a Bible lover, or a Bible hater, or a Bible disbeliever, you need to watch these videos. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it, a lot. It covers everybody. Uh -huh. You know what's amazing? Flat Earth is for everybody, and uh -huh. and all. Uh -huh. All of these videos are for everybody, but you need to watch these videos because mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. mind blowing. All mm -hmm. of them are mind blowing. But mm -hmm. um, you want to say what's going on, or yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I want to say that uh, I, I couldn't believe this. How did I first? How did I find out about this? Was it? How did we find out about James this? Thing? Probably me. Yeah, Greg Locke, uh, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Greg Locke, Pastor Greg Locke in uh, Mount Juliet Global um, Ministries, Glo Global Vision Global Bible Vision. Church. I think. Yes, yes. Um, it is having a debate tomorrow uh, evening, right? Yep. Okay. 6 p.m. As of right now. So it's not happened yet. We're going to make some predictions, see if they come to light, see if they happen. Uh, and he's debating Dean Odell, Pastor yep. Dean Odell. Yep. Biblical, um, biblical I, I will debate. Say, I will say I've met, uh, I have met um, Greg, you know, and we've communicated um, you know, and he's, he's watched my prank videos and all that stuff, you know? So um, I, Something Wait, stuck, what prank videos? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Something stuck out to me like a sore thumb. Uh, I because I watched him. Um, he was he was very upset. He seemed very upset he on stage. Down. He was. Uh, he said that he he cares what Jesus says about this topic. And there was a big, I guess something unexpected happened to him where, like, um, he made a comment or something about about. Um, flat earth and he had no idea that it was going to make so many people mad and more people were upset than he thought he thought it was like a small group of people it turned out to be like a bunch of people and so it caused some problems some issues um, 
And Dean Odell, I noticed, I heard a, um, like an hour sermon or something like that on this. And it was kind of interesting to me because he took the Bible and read scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture that he said these things pointed to the earth being flat, um, which was kind of nice listening to that because I did watch um, Greg's speech and and he didn't read anything from the Bible. He didn't say nothing. anything at all. Nothing. He didn't even open it. I don't think yeah. he, he, he says, I care what this book book says here, but he didn't say. So it could be one of two things. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Number one, I think <laughs> there, you know, he doesn't know what he's going to do because he's already seen Dean's thing. And Dean has all of these things to back up. Even if you interpret what Dean said differently, because yep. people could say, well, I interpret those scriptures differently. And here's why that's fine. Greg didn't even give people a chance to do that. There was nothing. I wonder, what, what do you think is going to happen? First of all, you tell me what you think is going to happen. Is this part of some other plan? That no? <laughs> There is some speculation about that. So Dean Odell um, runs a conference called Skyfall, which is a biblical conference. And okay. Pastor um, Locke was, uh, has spoken at that. So I'm like, well, he's got it. I mean, Dean is all flat earth. And uh, I guess they just never really got into it. So a lot of um, people were bringing up Flat Earth to him, and he had a meltdown uh, in his church um, on one Sunday, and then it ended up challenging Dean Odell to a debate. Everyone's like, no, you need to, let's have have a discussion. So he agreed to it, and I didn't think it was going to happen, and it's happening, and I'm here. Wow. Yeah, and uh, (laughs) And you're going to this thing tomorrow. Oh, I'm going. You're going to be there. We got got some big stuff. And it's going to be, I think, first, there's going to be a ton of media there, and I think they're going to try to straw man and lie about flat earthers, you know, as as what the media is going to do. But what's Pastor Locke going to do? He is either going to have a come to Jesus moment and like, wow, the Bible is a flat earth book. Because here's the thing in the Bible, there's things that are clearly undeniably pointing at flat earth. And then there's other verses that you have to kind of like, what does that mean? And you use your life experiences and your life belief system to interpret them. If you live on a globe in your mind, you're going to try to interpret them and make them fit your globe model. The mm-hmm. globe model is very similar exactly. in, in some things where you can make that work. But if you're a flat earther, it's going to equally work that be- as well or better than the globe. All, all the time, every single verse, mm-hmm. page one of the Bible, God separated the waters from waters and created the firmament, right. right? Every single verse. There's only one verse in the Bible that we can think of that he could use. And that would be Isaiah, where he said, God said, the circle of the earth, the circle of the earth, look up circle. A circle is a line Quarter. on a flat plane, a flat surface uh-huh. where every point on that line is equidistant from the center. That's a circle. Yeah, that's different than a. That's not a. That's not a sphere, mm-hmm. right? And I showed you that toroidal field. We live in the circle, and we live on all of the land that God created. The land mm-hmm. like a like a seal uh, pressed into clay, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the great flood is when they let the pressure out, and the waters came up from the deep, flooded the world. Yeah, and then he repressurized it and pushed the water back out. Mm. Crazy. So, so here's a the theory. Uh, what if, because you were talking about what a genius uh, PR person he is. He could be. Okay, so what if Greg, his whole thing, what if he's already decided? What if he's already had the come to Jesus moment that you're talking about, but secretly, and he's just waiting for the media and press to be there so that then he's like, you know what? Because it's not above him. He would do something like that, right? I mean, he would I he would pray, apologize. I or, pray that is the case. I yeah. I don't know if I would bet on it, but I pray that is the case because that would be amazing. Especially, I heard that he's letting media start setting up at noon for uh-huh. 6 p.m. So he's expecting a lot of media. So, you know, is the is the Daily Wire going to be there? Aren't they in Tennessee? Or They are. Yeah. 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 Um, there's a lot of people that are going to be streaming this and I, I, streaming it. I, I'm, I'm hoping it's not just Flat Earthers. But it's going to get out to a lot of people. I don't see how he can win. I could see how he can double down and uh, embarrass himself. But that's that's it. Or he's a he's gonna he's gonna if let's say you're right, and that is a possibility, he's got to change the name of his church. Yeah. <laughs> what would that be? Let's come up with some names. Yeah. <laughs> Just to kind of help out a little bit. 
global <laughs> global vision bible church I don't know. I'm sure. You I'm sure. Change it to world to vision. Plane. World, world. Yeah, world yeah, would be okay. world Bible church. Yeah, world. I guess. Yeah, worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Circle but, Bible Vision Church. But he's used to being hated by the media, first of all. So it's this isn't like he's gonna he's gonna have this moment. If he did change, <laughs> if he switched sides, well, he's gonna be hated by the media even more. <laughs> and I'm saying that wouldn't bother him. He would be like, Great. that's just attention. That's just attention. That's going to just be you, that much. You more. know what? There would be genius if he was doing that, and the timing couldn't be better. the 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 flat Earth, true Earth, level Earth movement is growing exponentially. We are one tweet away from being just from it from it flipping. Elon Musk tweeted, "You know the 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 movie um by Matt Matt um Matt what's his name? Now, um, what is a woman?" Mel Gibson. No, no, no. What is a woman? It's on the, on YouTube. Yes. Matt Matt Walsh. Walsh. Matt Walsh. Yeah. Sorry, Matt yeah. Walsh. Yeah, so, so, I was um, way off. That was that for a while. What, what, wait, first of all, what was the movie I was thinking of? What Women yeah. Want. Thank you. I what, so what is a woman? Okay. And, um, what is a woman? Elon Musk surprisingly tweeted one day, mm -hmm. everyone's got to watch this. Oh, really? I think it got 170 yeah. million views oh, wow. overnight. Oh, like, my gosh. Like a, like a ridiculous yeah. number. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, one tweet away from doing it. You know what happens when 170 million people see it? They're going to tell all of their friends. And then the next night it's going to be 500 million. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then it's over. Right. Then it's over. It's going to happen that fast. So maybe Greg Locke will be the man that makes it happen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know. Yeah. Golly. I mean, it's this is this is bizarre. I mean, I can't believe we're having this conversation you you you, sh you show up one day. You're 50 years old, and you just are like, "Well, I got about 20 years left. 30 years. Hopefully, I have more than 20. I guess. <laughs> but you got 20 or 30 years left, and uh, you may as well spend it. You know, changing the, changing your. It's just weird when you go through so much life. The highest, and you purpose. realize that a lot of what you've learned are new. Yeah, was a the, lie. I, I say the highest purpose you know, of life is to obtain maximum intellect and share it with others. Mm. That is our purpose here to expand the mind of God. Now in, uh, you know, 10 years ago, if you told me that I was going to quit the company that I started, I had the American dream. I'm my own boss, right? Mm -hmm. My boss is a bit of a dick, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh -huh. I, and uh, I was making lots of money uh, that I was going to quit. And I'm going to talk to people about flat earth <laughs> and about the creator. I feel like you have no idea who I am. There's zero <laughs> chance of that ever happening. And here I am. And here, here I am. You are. What does your wife think? Wow. Oh, she's on board. Question. She gets it. She's totally really? on board. How many kids do you have? Um, we have, we were second marriage and uh, okay. Okay. we have two each. Two each. Two each. Have two. Okay. Yeah, we and have all your each. kids. What do any, they any think? Together? No, no, none together. Okay. All right. None How together. long have you been married for? Um, we've been together for 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. Right, but I want to know okay. what your kids and think. And by the way, she didn't exist before I manifested her at a party. <laughs> like I, this party is Halloween party that I went to every year at a friend's house. And she was never, I never saw her. And then the one year at the perfect time, she appeared. And I believe that I manifested her with all of her memories and everything. Oh my goodness. It's a possibility. Did, did, really <laughs> did she, did she, uh, was she already there when you came along or no? No, we or, were both reading. I wasn't even there then. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't know about flat earth and, uh, we were both reading Eckhart Tolle's the power of now. And we were talking and we found out that we were both reading the same book. And okay. so that was just the start of a beautiful relationship. And, you know, we've been together 17 years. I don't think we've had one fight. Not one. No mm -hmm. kidding. Kind of weird, did, right? Did she become flat earth at the same time you did? Yeah, pretty much. She's like oh, looking at it, it together. and we both, we both grew. And as I said in the car, you know, I don't think it's very difficult for a couple to be together where one's flat and one's not. I mean, it can be done. It mm -hmm. can be done. But um, flat earthers get awful passionate about learning this truth and they yeah, understand the the why, what, how important it is. Um, mm -hmm. But we have the upper hand because... If your sp spouse loves you and has intelligence, you can un you can teach them about flat Earth, and they'll flip over. There is zero percent chance that they can flip you back to the globe. Right. And that's another thing they say: flat Earthers, you're all stuck in your ways. You'll never change your mind. No, we were globers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we changed our mind based on new information. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what do your kids think? So our so our kids just want to live their lives. Ah. They go in different different. My daughter, she's getting it because her friends now are like. 
becoming flat earthers and she gets it and she just like she just wants to she keeps it away my son he gets it because I, I went on he loves world wrestling federation and i've been on chris jericho many times and chris gives me comp tickets like front <laughs> row <laughs> and so i go i have no interest in going so mm-hmm. i've given them to my son so um, <laughs> little things like that you know um will we'll, are bringing them around and then uh you know they're they're at different stages but we don't we don't really talk about it much. They see it and um, they're, they're, they're kind of just holding their position and trying to, uh, trying to grow up as kids. Can you, who are, who's a handful of celebrities who are uh, flat earthers that you know about? Amy Irving, um, Chel- Kelsey Grammer. Uh, yeah. Fraser. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm out in your first time. All right. Listen, buddy, it's been long enough. Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, they're, they're at the Emmys a couple of years ago. Uh, we were told that that's all they were talking about. Everybody there. So I'm oh, probably wow. not everyone. They were all There's in a bunch circles of closeted talking about, yeah, they're all closeted wow. because guess what? They don't want to be deplatformed. Right. Hey, you're making millions and millions and millions and you know the truth. Are you going to tell people? Mm, mm. No. Eh. You know, pilots that, get. That's what was going on is a lot of people in 2020 yeah. didn't want to take the uh, yeah. the vaccine no, and easy, all that stuff. Easy they, if they you want to go on YouTube. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, no. I, uh, you but, can't say but, that word. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, it. it's, it's the Jimmy okay, Jab. Whatever. <laughs> I hate that you can't say so. That's ridiculous. It's so stupid. Um. Yeah, but you <laughs> have like to be. Face. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Don't forget your point. Don't forget your point. Um. All the countries in the world fighting over resources, fighting over everything. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. uh-huh. They all agree you can't go to Antarctica and you got to get the Jimmy Jab. Yeah, they all agree on those Bizarre. two things, and you you can't you can't do those two things. It's kind of like they're all in it together. Know. You know, That's it's like it's kind of yes. like a worldwide conspiracy. That. Yeah, it's I nuts. watched this video where they were showing Putin all the footage of faking the moon landing, and he, he was like, "What?" He's like, "This is crazy." <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot yeah. of fake stuff out there. Yeah. You know, Globers put out a lot of fake propaganda because they have to they have to try to trick us into looking stupid. Like there's a video of a, of um Stanley Kubrick uh in a like a candid dark room interview mm-hmm. saying that uh they filmed the moon landing and everything. It's not him, it's fake. Mm-hmm. And they spliced it with a lot of um B-roll stuff from the movie um where they fake going to Mars. Yeah, they, they hired somebody to to play Stanley yeah. Kubrick in the movie or something. This yeah, is an yeah. actor but to they, play they him. But they put this together that. with real footage and 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 fake footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, yeah. and flat earthers are spreading it around as truth, and then the Globers laugh at us. Oh yeah. yeah. See, that's that's what sucks, man. You're yeah. trying to prove your point. Yeah. You're on board with everybody else. Yeah. And then we talk about that all the time. Republicans, Democrats, like everybody's guilty of that stuff. And then the rest of everybody looks stupid. You know, yeah. because somebody lied about some video or took something out of context. Mm-hmm. Look and see what, you know, Joe Biden said. Well, that's not hard. He does say some pretty goofy stuff, but you, <laughs> you, you, can, you yeah. can almost pick anything. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you can take something out of context, put it out there as truth. And that's what really sucks about it. I, I did. I did yeah. it. I saw the Stanley Kubrick thing and I was yeah. like, oh, my gosh, look what he said. I can't believe it. Then I realized, oh, it's not even him. Yeah, it stinks. There's a lot of, lot of stuff like that. Chris has a question going Good. back Go. to circumnavigation. Yeah. What do you think about people who have circumnavigated the earth by plane, space travel, and by boat? Thanks for asking. That's my favorite question of all. Really? <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. All right. So, um, and I'm going to have to give you a video to splice in here. Okay. Um, so think of the flat earth map. And at the center of the flat earth is um, a magnetic north. And a lot of people say it's Mount Maru. It's a giant magnetic mountain. And there's actually, you know, have you ever, guys ever seen that vortex video of the north where it looks like there's this crazy vortex like going into the earth? Yeah. And if you look at the wind patterns and the clouds, there's something sticking up through it. Uh, and it looks like the top of a mountain. Mm. And it's black. And they call it the black rock. Black rock runs the world. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So... So in this experiment, you can do yourself, get a circle, draw, get a piece of paper, draw a big circle on it, put a big neodymium magnet in the middle, get a compass and put it on the table. The compass is going to point towards the North. Okay. It's going to point towards the magnet because that's the center of the flat earth. South is away from the center. So that direction would be West. Now try to push that compass, whether it's a ship or an airplane West, what's going to happen. That's not West. That's west because you have that needle always has to point towards the north. So you're just going to make a circle 
when you travel 270 west or 90 east, you're going to come right around equidistant from the North Pole and come right back to where you started from. Mm. Now, that doesn't prove the Earth is flat because it's the same on a globe. If you're on a globe and you're a mile from the North Pole, so you drive, you got a rope, it's tied to the North Pole. You have to stay that same distance from the North Pole to head west. You're going to walk 6.28 miles around. And you need to come right back to where you started from, and your compass will never have changed bearings. Hmm. Now, people say, well, you, that means you always have to, you know, going west, you have to compensate to the right. Nobody does that. Yes, you do. You wouldn't know. If you're on a track that was 100 miles around, you wouldn't even know that you were turning. Hmm. You wouldn't even know that you're turning. And uh, ship's captains in the Southern Oceans are always that have reported that when they're trying to dead wreck in east or, or west, they have to always correct to the north. That's a problem for the globe. Because in the south, on a globe, you'd have to correct the other way. On a flat earth, you'd always correct to the north. And no one ever reports having to correct in the Southern Oceans to the south. They have to re correct to the north. We have Navy whistleblowers, captains, that talk about this. And here's the problem. What about southern circumnavigation? Mm -hmm. On your map, on your magnet, every direction away from the center is south. South is that way. South is also that way. South is that way. And south is that way. Right? Now, if I'm heading north, if this is the North Pole, I'm heading north, I'm heading north, I'm heading north. Now I'm heading south. I'm heading south because the, the north is behind me. Mm -hmm. So south is every direction away from the center. Guess how many people have circumnavigated south? We went over it before. Zero. Mm. Nobody's ever done it. If the earth was a globe, people would have circumnavigated south. Hasn't been done. Wow. That makes sense, Chris. Or do you have I yeah, don't yeah. Know. question yeah, to that? I don't know. Yes, I don't know. And there, there you go. <laughs> so that, that's what they've trained you to say. I'm not smart enough. Guess who becomes the teachers? The ones that memorize and regurgitate with perfect accuracy. Mm -hmm. Then they get to teach the next child. Teachers aren't liars. They're, memor they're memorizers. Right. Mm. I, I agree. Uh, it's my, that's why I, I, I tell the story all the time. And it's, <laughs> I think it's worth telling. And it, I think it's something that, you know, a little tip from the creator that uh, this is my journey. My earliest school memory was when the teacher brought us out to the like first grade or kindergarten even brought us out to the playground to teach us about gravity he Had a bucket of water and a string attached to the bucket. And he swung it around and it's whoosh, and he said, that's gravity. And I, as a little kid, <laughs> said. If we live on the globe, though, the water is on the outside. Wouldn't you have to put the water on the outside of the bucket? And the teacher goes like this. He goes, <laughs> he goes over to his book. He brings it back. I remember his book. It had pencil lines and highlights in all different colors, like, like 10 teachers owned it for 30 years. And he goes, this is how they tell me to teach it. So that's how I'm going to teach it. But you keep asking questions. Wow. And then I went and played on the swing. <laughs> no way. And that's it. <laughs> and that's my earliest Whoa. school memory. And then, you know. X number of years later, 2014, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm. And I started looking into the stuff. And the more <laughs> you look, the you know, people often ask me, what are the chances, Dave, that you'll switch your mind? And I say, the chances are zero, but I'm willing to look mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's just too much evidence now. There's mm -hmm. too much evidence. Uh huh. There's too much evidence. Right. With all the experiments and stuff. Too many. Every experiment through time, through every accredited and just everybody, every experiment to prove axial rotation, the spinning of the earth or curvature, which a ball requires, has proven the opposite every single time. Now, I, I think it's funny that watching all of the people today, you can't trust anybody. And if that if there's one thing that's been going on, especially in the last decade or half a decade, um, it's been that we all sort of collectively agree, most of us, that we've been lied to quite a few times, and it opened us up to what else are they lying to us about. But this is a really hard topic for people to wrap their head around. Yeah, and I, I, I don't, I don't know why, but it's in, it's embedded so deeply, I guess, into our brains that it's really hard to come around. And so I listen to some of the debates that are going on, and. You see that when somebody doesn't go over to the flat earth side, yeah. they don't always necessarily have a good reason why not. Right. And I think that's because there's 75 years of 
you know, it's just too hard. Cognitive right? so dissonance. There, there's, there's what I, the, the anti flat earthers, the people that are paid or possessed, and I don't think there's really much of a difference. These are people, you know, and many of them, many of the 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 top ones. There's not even that many. Um, they all had serious crimes against them that they were in court for, and it looked like they were going to jail. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, their books were closed, mm -hmm. and they showed up on the anti flat earth side. Like somehow, like they made some sort of deal that they would do this for to avoid jail time. Interesting. Huh. And it, it's interesting. Uh, one of them was a, a doctor that was prescribing uh, narcotics for sexual favors. Another guy had brutally beaten a woman, and he was going to jail. All of a sudden, the books are closed, and he's he appears. They appear right after that on the on the anti flat earth scene. Huh. Wow! Right? Imagine that. Imagine, Imagine you got caught with a trunk full of cocaine. You're going to jail for the rest of your life. Your wife's going to lose the house. The kids are going to be homeless. And they say, or you can do this thing. And mm. not only that, we'll pay off your house. Right. We'll put your kids through college. Wow, that's and, creepy. We'll, that's creepy. And, and we'll give you, uh, yeah. you know, um, so uh, this amount a month. You, mm -hmm. you might do it. You might do it because if you're already deprived Man. enough immorally to do the crime, you're probably deprived enough to accept that offer. Mm -hmm. Dirty. Here's the thing. We are fighting against a spirit in a spiritual war that most people don't believe exists. And that's how they get away with it. We're fighting against the, the principalities of evil mm -hmm. um, that are literally trying to steal our souls and, and run this world. You know, they, they say that the uh, that Satan is the ruler of this world. And maybe that's the case or not. Yep. But we don't have to participate on their game board. We don't have to. Um, they trick us. We have free will. I'm only one person. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, that's not true. You're one person. You're stronger than a million that aren't telling the truth. You stick to your truth. You walk in your truth. You, you do. You share knowledge with others and you be good to the person to the left of you and the person to the right of you. If everybody did that, this world would be amazing. This world is amazing, mm -hmm. but there's so many people lost in the sauce that um, that's how they get away with it. This is an important podcast. This is an important message. This is why I dedicated my life to this. I told you I don't have to go to work on Monday, right? I'm right. like on a podcast and I use that saying, I'm like, what day of the week is it? And I have no <laughs> idea what day of the week it is other than the fact that I looked at my calendar and said, oh, I got a show. Mm -hmm. um, Cause mm -hmm. I was doing, you know, I've done over a thousand shows in three years, wow. a thousand, right? That's a lot. That is. And, and the thing is, I work harder now than I've ever worked in my entire life. I work seven days a week. I work while I'm sleeping. I haven't slept <laughs> since 2018 because mm -hmm. my app developer is in, in uh, India. And, uh, you know, the the, earth, the sun is on the other side of the world when, not when I should be sleeping. And that's mm -hmm. when he's awake. Mm -hmm. So, so. I've never been happier because if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Because mm -hmm. honestly, if I had a full time job during my spare time, I'd be doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just fascinated right. by all of this stuff and, and thank you so much for coming and, and being, uh, being willing to do this. I know how busy you are and stuff. I appreciate it. it. Maybe it do cool. it again and I can sit on the new couch when you have a new couch. Give me a call then. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I wasn't <laughs> right? sure. If you, I wasn't sure. If I would, I'd be able to get you to come. Cause I see you on all these zoom, you know, no, everyone zoom says that. I'm just a normal like guy. I'm just like everybody else. I just have the biggest mouth and, uh, and a lot of motivation. So I'm doing my best to, to get people out, they say, you know, you got, you got to hear the same thing multiple times before it clicks. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm getting in your head multiple times. Okay, cool. Yeah. Chris, but don't do believe any it. Don't believe anything I say. Like, Go anybody? verify everything. It says that in the Bible. I yeah. right? believe no man verify everything. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100. percent In fact, I even I'll 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 say this. Um, growing up in church and stuff like that, I've been telling a lot of people this recently. But growing up in church. I, I came to the realization recently that I, f I feel like a lot of what I know now as a Christian isn't because I researched it, but because I heard it taught to me some from some a man on a stage, you know, a preacher, a pastor, or something like that. Um, and every once in a while you hear, hear a pastor say, don't believe it, read it for yourself, you know, and I, I like that. Right. But I've been doing that a lot lately, and it's really true. That's how you're going to know the truth, is if you actually do some digging, think about it, critical thinking and common sense. I like the common sense yeah. aspect to the way that you think. They, I like that a lot because that's the way that man was kind of created to have common sense. And we lost that. And now we're being, it's being dictated to us what to think. I forget which guy said, he said, you know, give me a kid, you know, for the first formative years of his life and I'll, I'll own them forever. Mm -hmm. And basically they didn't teach us how to think in school. They taught us how to memorize and what to, what to think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not how yeah, to think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, case in point, 
Um, you know, people make comments like I'm not smart enough. Well, that's you saying that those words are powerful. And guess what? You know, you're, you're not going to be smart enough if you keep saying that, but you do have common sense, God given common sense. Chill five-year-olds are smart enough to understand the earth isn't spinning, wobbling, rotating through a space vacuum, you know, but, but they're told, Hey, I know you don't believe this, but you know, the tooth fairy is real. Santa Claus is real. And, and it's not flat. Like the water dictates, um, we're spinning, you know, we're not, we're, we're not stationary. Like every sense tells you you're too small to feel that. I mean, literally you're taking the kids, um, connection to reality away at an early age. And once you trick them, uh, where they live, you can trick them into anything. You could trick them that you need to put a piece of toxic plastic over your face uh, right. to protect mm. you from the boogeyman. <laughs> mm. Exactly. Yeah. Is so it okay true. to teach your kids about the tooth fairy? You think that's okay? No, it's not okay. Yeah, see, because I, I noticed what you were saying there. <laughs> it's okay. not okay. Yeah. Now so you're, you you're say, not a... hey, you lost a tooth. Put it under your thing, uh -huh. and and you know what? The mommy and daddy fairy will, you know, there'll be a gift there for you in the morning. Something. Make yeah. up a better story. Yeah. There's a way better story. <laughs> Santa Claus, same thing. Santa Claus, just to say, you know what? You've been a good kid this year. Let's share gifts of, with each other. I don't believe in giving gifts on Christmas. I love giving gifts all the time. Mm hmm uh, that's a good way to end this. I like that. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Thanks, right. man. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Kiss my cat.